<laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? It's uh, Wednesday night. It is uh, Xbox Nation night. We do have a good show. There's a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Uh, but most importantly, uh, we've got a good group of people here, although not everybody could make it tonight. So uh, that is a little bit of a bummer. Dealer uh, had schoolwork and stuff, and Hellhammer had to bow at, a, at the last minute, leaving us kind of stranded. Uh, that's Hellhammer for you. That's so Hellhammer. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, but we do got, you know, we got Mooch. Hey, what's hey up, now. Mooch? Hey, hey now. WNBC. <laughs> yes. No, we are broadcasting. Uh, listen, I was up way too late last night having way too much fun on PUBG. So yeah. I know we're going to talk PUBG, about it. Nobody can play PUBG. That game no, is broken. It's not even playable, right? Yes, it's, yeah, it's, I don't know how the hell he's doing it for five hours. Um, yeah, I don't know. We can't wait to get into it, buddy. <laughs> a lot of good subjects and uh, PUBG. Yes, uh, it is. It is. It's 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 a fun time to to be an Xbox gamer. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, we've got Noof Nukem. What's up, Noof? Come on. Boom, Noof Nukem up in the room. It is Wednesday night. Xbox Nation, it is the place to be, as Mooch and Crap have already alluded to. we got lots of great topics to get into. Can't wait to dive in on the PUBG scenario and all that good stuff. It's going to be fun. Stick around, guys. Hell yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's always it's always fun when we got Noof Nukem in the Noof house. Noof yeah, hemorrhoids. <laughs> hemorrhoids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we also got the one and only Kiss That Ring, the Dun. I, I guess, hey, what up, up, guys, man? It's this what, the hey. second week in a row, man. Yeah, man. welcome back. Man. Like, I asked you to join before I knew other people couldn't make it, too. I was like, you know what? Dunn probably would give a good perspective on PUBG and this and the stuff like uh, early access and stuff being a developer. And everybody's freaking out. Uh, you know, you go to N4G and you see. PUBG runs like crap. Did Microsoft make a mistake betting on PUBG? OMG, Microsoft, Doom, PUBG, ugly. You know what I mean? Like, no shit. This is exactly what you see all over the place, right? Yeah, uh, I, absolutely I like I should, ridiculous. I feel like I should do a disclaimer since I've been on your show twice in a week in a row. Like, the views of Crap Gamer and uh, <laughs> don't reflect the, my opinions or something like that. But no, uh, no, no Too late, fallout Don. From last, no fallout from last week. Uh, it's been all good. And, you know, I, I'm, I love coming on to these shows when I can. And, yeah, I, I feel like there needs to be a little bit of a course correction with uh, PUBG and people's expectations for sure. So, Oh, absolutely. So uh, if you guys didn't know, and this kind of just came out recently, which was uh, PUBG, there's over 500,000 people on that game on Xbox right now yeah. um, on the leader, like already less than a day into the launch. Uh, Mooch, we said this thing would hit a million yeah. easy this year. And yeah, it was that funny. We talked about it, what, on uh, uh, MNC last week. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. I'm I'm not surprised, but I am pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but like my whole point is that I thought we would probably see, you know, a million by the end of the year, maybe going into fe January, February, March. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think we're going to break. We, we we're probably going to hit a million by by end of the year because I can only speak for myself, right? My own example. But like in all honesty, like a lot of people that I know are getting PUBG as we speak. They're getting it tonight. Uh, some people were just wanting to see some of the reactions. They wanted to ask people they knew. They're like, I'm getting PUBG tonight. People were writing me all day. I'm getting PUBG. I'm getting it. Um, yeah. and, and uh, if some of the naysayers are getting it, but you know, the one thing I want to address here tonight, crap, and, and we don't have to talk about it per se, right this very second, but it'll bleed into the conversation is I, I took a few minutes last night when I got done playing after five hours of playing PUBG, I went and I watched a bunch of videos and one that I had to just stop on was I watched IGN playing it. And when I watched it, it was Destin Legary and some other new guy, you know, because they, they can't keep people at IGN for long. Yeah. So some new guy who's a PC guy was like, you know, he's like, oh, the whole time Destin Legary is playing on Xbox. He's like, oh, my God, it's just it's almost unbearable to watch. Oh, and, and Destin's like, tell me about it. I know it's so hard. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, here's the thing, guys, like where for what kind of computer do you think people have out there? Do you think everybody has these PCs that the people in the chat, some of the guys that troll that are in the chat, or some of the guys that are on I, that are IGN people that have three thousand, two thousand, five hundred, five thousand dollar rigs, like people don't have that at home. They don't. Yeah. Well, you and, know what's, what's funny is uh, Digital Foundry did their little thing, and they were using a seven hundred dollar was like Titan or whatever, um, and they're like, we can't even get a sixty steady sixty with this. You know no. what I mean? So, no. uh, it's, so when it's, you see these, <laughs> no, go ahead, crap. I was just gonna say, like the the amount of people that I see uh, crawling out of the woodwork. First of all, you have 
the quote unquote Xbox fans that are pissy, uh, you know, oh, it doesn't right. matter. You know, it's like they don't understand this is a preview program game. It's not a triple A game, hence the thirty dollar price tag. I mean, the game's not going to be more than thirty when it launches. Um, it's a thirty dollar game, right. and even though it's a huge game, it's had problems on PC since the beginning, and to this day still has problems on PC. Right. So of course it's going to have problems on Xbox, and it's if you day buy into, one, it is. If you buy into the preview program, uh, your job is to help craft this game and get it better. You're basically that's what you're doing, and I think people that's kind of lost on some people, uh, and that's a bit unfortunate because when I play the game, I have to tell you what for a game that what does a, a hundred people, I found a game in like three seconds, like it was the fastest damn like lobby I'd ever seen. And, you know, at first you're like, man, this game does look kind of crappy when you jump out of the plane or whatever. But then when you get on the ground, it looked much better. You know, I'm not saying it looks great or anything, but I thought it looked it looked pretty good. Uh, it didn't look terrible by any standards. I thought that it looked it looked fine. Uh, you go around, you scavenge. Uh, it was really my first. I played it once before on PC and I thought, you know, it was OK. But when you play it on console and at your home. You, you can get more into it, you know what I mean? And I just I just found it a lot more fun. You can switch between first person and third person. Um, you find weapons. The map is big. It's like, honestly, I didn't even find enough people uh, to play with. Like, people were just like, when I, I kept hearing gunshots. I kept looking for people, couldn't find anybody. I think my first match, I ended up in the top 25. And I died because I ended up outside well, of the fighting zone. I don't know <laughs> if it was new, but there was a few people that were writing me and they were like, you know, I played last night and this is the, the way. I, here's the way I break down PUBG. And this isn't because it's just like, I'm not going to play PUBG seven days a week for the next 365 days. Yeah. I, I'm personally not. But here's the thing. There's multiple nights during the week. Weekends are a little different. You have a little bit more time on weekends. So you can get into an Assassin's Creed. You can get into a Wolfenstein. You can get into these types of games. You can't really get into a lot of games during the week when you become a full-time working person, family, this, that. The thing that's really cool about the game is you can go in, play either squads of two, four, or play single. And at the end of playing a match or two, which you probably, if you play two matches, you're probably in for 40 minutes. And that's, it's satisfying. It's it's gratifying. It's it's fun to play. Yeah. And you feel like you shut off your game, you go to bed, you're like, all right, I got to get up in the morning. But like people have to get up four, five, six in the morning. So it's like, all right, you do that. You did something you played. And you achieve something. Maybe you won. Maybe you came in second or third or fourth place. It's still an achievement to yourself that you did something quality. I think there's something to be said for that. We haven't had a game like the old... And I understand we have boots on the ground now with Call of Duty. Yeah. But when Call of Duty first came out with multiplayer, that was a big deal. People used to say, oh, I log on to Call of Duty. I play two, three, four matches, and then I'm out. And it was fun to do that. We haven't had a game like that in a very, very long time. And PUBG gives you that. They, you can log on. Play for about 20, 30, 40 minutes and get off, and you still accomplish something. It's not like crap. You play 20 minutes of Wolfenstein, you're barely getting anywhere in one map or one level. You're not getting yeah. it. Assassin's Creed, you barely, you <laughs> you're barely not getting anything. You might as well not even boot it up for 20 right. minutes. You know what so, I mean? Like, and that's my point. I want to, and I definitely want to hear Noof because Noof has some really good, interesting points. Me and him played last night for about two hours. And you know, and Noof is a great. I'm surprised everybody was like, "It's a flip book. It's this. It's that. It's it's this." It's, you no, Noof, I let me hand the mic over to Noof. <laughs> Noof, you kind of said some things that were kind of intriguing in the fact that you said, you know, this this game is fun, and I can see myself playing it, but it's not an everyday game, and I agree with you. Yeah, well, totally. Like, first of all, guys, the people that are complaining, what is it you don't get about game preview? Every game that's pretty much come out in the game preview program, minus a few, have been rare, rarely buggy and things like that. And here's the thing. I think in a perfect world, PUBG wouldn't be out on the Xbox right now if, per se, it was just a matter of, of, of waiting till it's like a fully fledged game. But here's the deal, right? I mean, it's been out on PC for a while. Xbox people have been clamoring for it. I think along the lines, they needed to get this game out the door. It's in a playable state, obviously, uh, you know, and it doesn't really distract from the fun. There are some glitches. There are some errors with the game, obviously. Textures drawn late. Uh, frame rates, probably one of the major issues they have to work on. If they can get this game at a steady 30 frames, Fan freaking tastic. I think it won't make a big difference if it hits, but you know, there are some issues with it. And give credit where credit is due the fact that they even got this game running on the standard Xbox One, let alone the X is is you know is a testament. I mean, it, it is a pretty big game. Uh, there's a lot going on, that sort of thing. There's you know, it's a huge, huge map. Yeah, it's got issues. We kind of get that. And uh, 
you know, but it is a lot of fun. There's something tangible. I wasn't sure I'd like it at first, Mooch, but after we got in and we played our first couple of rounds, you know, we're trying to get used to the control scheme and which is a little bit different, mind you, and stuff like that. Like it turned into be a lot of fun, you know, because everything's so unpredictable at that game. Like you don't really know technically where you're going to land. You don't really know how many people are going to be there when you do land. Then you're trying to find weapons and, you know, and, but it's this camaraderie that's well, there. And, and there's the terrain, you know, there's the terrain that is, that, that plays an integral uh, role in, yeah. the, in the game. There's the miscellaneous not many vehicles out there okay which do two things or maybe even more but two come to mind using the vehicles to either run over your opponents and make a quick kill that's one thing or there's times where you're just uh using resources or looking for resources pardon me and the bubble starts to close and you need to find a motorcycle or a car for your group to make it so that you're not beyond the barrier so i mean there's just the game consistently keeps changing every time you hit yeah. new game. And that is also something to be said, Noof, like what you're saying, is that the game doesn't really get, it doesn't really get boring. And last night, how many, uh, Noof actually got off because Noof's in a different time zone than me. So Noof was like, oh, we're well, eating, I blah, blah. to get some dinner when I came back. But, you guys had already filled up and then I played again with another I had said, player. well, you know what it was though, Noof? I had said I was going to play three or four rounds and that was it. I ended up playing six because every time we got done, I was like, all right, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. And I'm like, Man, I'm like, I got to go to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, like, it's that kind of game. And if yeah. I, I just can't tell you how long it's been. And if you're sitting out there in the audience right now, this is not fanboy. This is not this. This is not that. All I'm saying is true games. What will you need games, Mooch. Without games, it's just a box. Okay, well, here's your game. Okay? <laughs> and it's a game that brings the community together. It brings players together. You're going to meet a lot of great people during this game. And, it, 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 like I said, we just got word that 500,000 people are playing on Xbox One. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And it's going to get, it's going to get, uh, 24 it's, hours. It's going to get more. Like, don't be surprised if it's over a million by the end of the weekend. Yeah. You know, this is going to be huge. And people really, really, really thought that it was going to be, um, I don't know what people thought, right? I thought mm -hmm. that people maybe think now they're kind of hope, hopping on this whole, it runs bad situation, yeah. you know, yeah. like, yeah. Oh, they can enjoy They can enjoy no. that crap for about 40 days. Once you yeah. give the de devs 30 to 45 days, things are going to change. Oh, I exactly. I'm going to take a wild guess and figure they're probably about, like, a solid six months from sort of being close to, like, what we call a, you know, a bona fide retail copy. You know what I mean? Because they still got to yeah. go now and they got to work on that second map on the PC side of things, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on. But I figure they're probably six months. It could even be a year, really. But... Uh, bottom line is, if you want in on the action, you want to have some good times, go pick this thing up. But you know what? If if the the people that are kind of griping about it and stuff are turning off, fine. You know what? Don't buy it. Don't spend money. But here's the deal. You can pick it up pretty cheap to begin with. And I can guarantee you every single one of us on this panel has spent $30 or $40 on games that are far, far um not as good as what like, PUBG is, you know, in terms of playing it and having fun with it. So bottom line, you know what? Let us test it out for you. Sure, I kind of get it. We're technically beta testers here, uh, but we're, we're paying to be a part of it. But that's it. We're in on the game early. We're having fun right now. And uh, we're going to continue to have fun with the game. And along the way, there's going to be lots of patches and updates. The game's going to progress. It's going to get better. And, uh, yeah, and there you go, man. So if you want to wait, cool. But otherwise, get in on the action. It's a lot of fun. Somebody asked me. I had a few people ask me, is it worth getting now? Should I wait till it releases fully? And I'm like, you know what? If you're really interested in it, get it now. Otherwise, if you wait, everybody's going to get really good at this game. And you're going to come in and get stomped. And then you're going to just quit. You know, like that's what happens in these games. You know, like the funny thing is when you, when I look at my Xbox friends list, very rarely this generation, like last generation, yeah, whenever a Call of Duty would come out or a Halo, all my friends would be on that game, right? And I haven't really seen that that much this generation, a little bit with Halo 5, um, not even with this Call of Duty, which was a big game, but with PUBG, I look down my friends list and almost uniformly player unknown battlegrounds, you know, everybody's playing this game. This game has a huge impact on gamers and I think that you know, that is really something that Microsoft picked up on. So also what I picked up on was the media really, really doesn't want Microsoft to have any successful no, they don't. To anything. You know, no, it's like, don't. like I said earlier, oh man, it's bad. It runs bad. It looks bad. It's a flip book. It's this, it's that. And I'm playing this game yesterday and I'm like, you know what? This game, I didn't have any frame rate issues. I had a server, a bit of server lag uh, a couple of times, but for the most part, it was really smooth. Uh, Don, What's your like reaction to this that people are like freaking out over a game preview program game? Um, just being a developer, what's your thoughts? Well, 
there's two thoughts, right? Well, the first is I, I don't think they really Microsoft makes it very clear on the store. It is a game preview game. Uh, they make yeah. it seem like it's a regular uh, release. So for people that are buying the game and they think it's a regular release game and don't know it's a preview game, you know, you, those people have a legitimate gripe. I, I would say they're the only ones <laughs> that have a legitimate gripe. But all the people that we know on Twitter within the circle that we have, yeah. they, they know it's a they, they know it's a game preview game. We, we know it's going to be a game preview game for 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 months now, right? And so yeah. mm-hmm. realistically, what people need to understand with game preview game, it's an unfinished game. So games in development will fluctuate in performance till its official release. So it's gonna the game's gonna get better. The game's gonna yeah. get worse. The game's gonna get better. The game's gonna get worse. It's gonna happen. It's gonna have that tug of war within your experience being now in the official launch, right? So, you know, just like when we have the preview program for the dashboards, right? How many times have the dashboard all of a sudden it was awful and then it was good? Yeah. It was yeah. awful and it was good. It's the same thing we're gonna experience with this. So what what you're paying for is early access, essentially is what, what you're paying for. And, you know, if you have that perspective going in, you know, you really have no, no complaints. Um, but the people that don't know, because you go to the Xbox store, it shows player unknown battlegrounds. It doesn't say anything about preview program or anything like that. This shows the, uh, the guy in the welding mask, right? You go in there, it's 30 bucks. You're like, okay, get me in. Um, and so I think that, that part could be a little bit more transparent. But outside of that, like, I think people's expectations are just out of whack and they're just looking for something to, to pick on Yeah. At, at, at this point. But, you know, it's a huge successful game. You know, it's a phenomenon, right? I mean, yeah. we haven't seen a phenomenon like this since Minecraft. Minecraft right? Yep. So in Minecraft, we had crappy performances and stuff like that, and people still bought it and still grown into the game that it is today, right? So until it's official release. So it's, this is going to be no different. So I agree. And you know what's funny is because I'm looking at Twitter and Mikey Barra says they're working on the frames, et cetera, lots of updates regularly, just like on PC. So it's not like they're not, like it's going to constantly get updates on xbox one so it's not going to be something that you're going to have to deal with for long the xbox one x especially is very powerful uh it's going to be optimized more and when you when you look at this game the front screen says pre-release software game preview game is unfinished and work in progress may change over time and may not release as a final product which that's not very reassuring but still i mean it's letting you know right there that hey this game is preview program uh, and I do think, you know, Microsoft obviously wanted to get this game out like as soon as possible. Uh, you got to strike while the iron's hot. Mm-hmm. If this game can do a million or more than that within this year, that's a huge win for Microsoft. Uh, just to put this into kind of perspective, um, already done more than stuff like Hellblade, um, already done more than stuff like, uh, you know, Yakuza or Gravity Rush 2 all yeah. combined. Right. Um, so a lot of people that think that Microsoft gamers and Xbox gamers don't buy right. exclusives well, or whatever. Well, here's a here's a good case that you know shows that wrong. Not just that. Good. I'm just trying to make a shout out to Predator who's in the chat. And Pred goes, you know, people can't diss PUBG's visuals and frames coming from PC and have the nerve to hype up Skyrim on the Switch. You know, he's made a lot of great points today. And this is the double standard, right? This is what we've been saying. This is the reason we do this. This is the hashtag bias media out there, okay? Uh, IGN was that that two hour showing yesterday was just torture to watch. Um, it's two guys completely poking fun at the fact that this is day one of a preview game, and they're sitting there talking about the PCs. And meanwhile, the guy who's talking about PC and boosting up PC, he's playing on a four thousand dollar PC. You know, what I mean, it's like yeah. I, I don't understand what in the world these people are trying to get their logic from. It's a five hundred dollar box. I do believe that when this game is completely out of preview, I do believe the X. I don't know if they're going to give it to us or not, but they're going to. It's going to be able to do sixty frames, and the game is in four K. And yeah, okay, some of the textures and the rocks and stuff don't look good, but the fences and the homes and things like that in the four K resolution, it looks good. Um, looks okay. You know, I mean, it really, from yeah. what people were talking about to what I saw, you'd never know it was the same game. And that's what I'm saying. So you, yeah. you really, how are people boosting, uh, Skyrim on switch? Great example, Pred. They've been saying how great it is. You know, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. It's not yeah. great, but it's Skyrim. 
Well, guess what, everybody? It's not great. It's not done yet, but it's PUBG. And there you go. Like, enjoy it. I don't understand. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. and to, to that point as well, just hold on one second, Noof, is that why is it like people are worried about muddy textures and stuff and what the resolution is of that game right now? Like when nobody's worried about the resolutions and textures and soupy textures and shit all over the PS4 Pro because that thing has no 4K textures, no 4K assets, cannot do 4K assets because Sony rushed something out the door that didn't have the capabilities to do it. So I find it funny that people try to fall back on that bullshit. Right. And, you know, I refuse to let it do anything because you know what that game runs on PS4 right now? Fucking zero frames per second, <laughs> zero P. So <laughs> shove that in your fucking pipe and smoke it kids because you know what you guys got nothing and you're jealous and you see that you're jealous and seeing them in the chat and seeing them show up on twitter and try to talk shit it's funny to me yeah. because, i'm still waiting know. for that crap gamer comparison video Those Dude, are i'm working on it i am working on it um <laughs> i, I I'm, I'm you know what i had trouble capturing the ps4 pro footage of PUBG for some reason so yeah, i don't know you know i can hardly shot angle yeah, yeah yeah it's like yeah uh, so you know, all i was gonna say guys is let's let's not kid anybody here PUBG was never a great looking game out of the box day no. one on the pc yeah, it doesn't like, look on pc it's, either it's not one of those games that's gonna blow anybody's minds graphically it wasn't made that way again it was made off of what like a mod or something that turned into like the as don said a phenomenon right i mean it just they they struck a chord with gamers it was never impressive to begin with and it's probably not going to look all that impressive 10 months from now it is what it is you know it's just a fun game with lots of people playing a lot of unpredictability and it will get better i can promise you that it will get better it's going to take some time uh, a lot of server testing going on right now too i'm sure look with the big influx of players over on the xbox but yeah noof look at this and shout out to milky way and, the, and he goes PUBG is an unoptimized mess we shouldn't be defending it, but criticizing it. PlayStation has nothing to do with this. And he's saying, I'm an Xbox fan. But Milky Way, hear me out for a second, dude. It's in fucking preview. I mean, yep. we got to say that. I, it's not a cop out. It's not even It's not even a loophole. It's just what it is. Yep. It's, well, it's, it's what in you, preview. Like, yeah, it's, it's not, we're not defending buying. it. We're saying that even in the state that it's in, it's fun. And if it's fun on day one of a preview, like I watch people that streamed We Happy Few. The first day it came out, it put me into a coma. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that game sucks to me. And it sucks to a lot of you because nobody bought it. So yeah. my point being is this has got $500,000 people playing it. And let me use Milky Ways in an unoptimized mess. Yeah. The unoptimized mess. There's 500,000 500, people playing it as we speak, probably more now. So what I'm saying to you is it's already known it's a work in progress. So imagine this game in one month two months, three months, four months. It's a well, huge success. We get it to is. go along the ride for 29 bucks. You got $29 in freaking beer can returns and under your couch cushions. <laughs> Calm well, down. Yeah, like, I, I don't understand that. Like, people are like, oh, it's just damage control. Look, it's a $30 preview program game. Uh, they got it out. We're helping to shape the game. I'm perfectly fine with it. You don't have to get it. Honestly, you do not have to get it. Most people, like the Don was saying, Know what you're getting into with the preview program game. How can I bitch about the Xbox dashboard preview program if I signed up for it, right? Like, well, I bought into this right, game. Right. How can I have, do I have any rights to complain about it? Right. Well, l let me add this. So let's say you buy the game and you're unhappy with the performance. Of the game. Return it. Yeah, exactly. You can return it. You call Microsoft. They will accept returns on, on this game. So, you know, you know the, the risk is really low for the, for the consumer, right? If, if they do buy it and they're unhappy with it, they can return it. Simple as that. And yep. then if you are interested when it's more stable, then go pick it up when it's more stable. Like there's nothing stopping you from being able to do that. And, you know, and I would love to have a game that's successful as this, this game. I, I'm I kid you not. Right. But at the end of the day, it doesn't run good on any powerful hardware. Yep. Yeah. It's not it's an Xbox World. One X problem. Those that are beating their chest going, the power of X exposed, the power of X, yeah. it sucks, blah, blah, blah. Dude, that's like saying, hey, man, there's people out there with thousands of dollars in PCs that are running this game yeah. horribly, right? It's an unoptimized mess. The people that are like, it's so great on PC, it's not. And not only that, but according to their the developers of this game, um, this is what they said. This is what the developer says. Uh, expect to see an experience similar to one found around May or June of this year on PC, right? That's what the developer said. 
So we're not even running the current PC version of the game. Yeah. Think about what the PC version was running around May or June of this year, which this game only came out in March, by the way. And that's where we are on Xbox One. Yeah. So we still got a ways to go. People need to be a little bit patient. You don't have to buy it. You can totally wait. Now, would I suggest waiting? No, because there is a skill involved in this game. And people are going to playing it a lot. There's going to be probably over a million playing it by this weekend. And more and more people are just going to keep on adding and adding. I don't think 1.5 million is out of the question by the end of the year. Um, I don't think 2 to 3 million is out of the question by the end of January. This game has legs, people. And yeah. people are going to, and they don't stop playing it. They, they're, it's like a thing. They, they just play it and play it and play it. Well, and they're good. So, wait, so you Milky know? Way again comes out and he says, crap. He says, PC's gotten a lot better. It has. It has. So, if you're going to sit there and tell me from March until yesterday, PC's gotten a lot better and you're, you are now defending PC. Can I just say that now we get seven months on our end and we can play through the experience and we're going to be a lot better? Why can't I say that? That's yeah. what I don't understand. These guys, you guys don't make any sense. That's the thing I don't understand. And, I, and you know, I wish, I don't know. I wish I could see like your degree or what the hell education you have before you like type. Yeah. Well, you know, let's take it a step further, right? They're optimizing on PC, which is multiple different builds, multiple different. Right. Builds. Right. So it's going to take longer to optimize on, on that platform. Love it or hate it, you know, PC, that's that's the harsh reality. On Xbox One and uh, so obviously Xbox One X and S in the standard, it's going to be quicker, right? Yeah. Like expect, and, and I don't want to set false expectations for anybody that's bought the game or anything like that. I would expect about a, a ratio of two thirds, right? right. Less less well, two thirds but like one third less time than what you're getting out of the pc to get the same sort of results right so mm -hmm. you know it's it's up to the consumer what the, what they want to do but this is not you can't take one game you know out of context and judge a whole entire platform off of one game that's not even done yeah like you're not doing yourself any favors when you do that right yeah you know if somebody is putting yourself out there like if i did that like that that would ruin me, right? Like if I put that sort of stuff out there on Twitter, like that that would come back to bite me yeah. uh, in, in what I do for, you know. How about the so, broken emptiness that was No Man's Sky that sold for 60 bucks and was oh, told you we... <laughs> <laughs> and was told to you that it was a completed game. That was a completed game. Yeah, it was. Hey, and then there's still and, and where's the developer on that one, right? Still 60 hiding. bucks uh for a for basically what was a twenty dollar indie game that they lied flat out to you what it was about Sean oh Murray is reportedly players. hanging out with sammy the bull he is they're both yeah. and they're chilling you know they're what both I mean? in like, vegas they, <laughs> that's a good point like the funny thing is people are all up they're like they're lined up to see xbox one x have some kind of failure right they are that's just the way it is and if this doesn't show it go look at n4g the top stories about how xbox one x runs it bad uh, did Microsoft make a mistake? Those aren't my headlines. Those aren't my headlines are much better than that. But those are just like, you know, headlines to really draw in people that hate Xbox because there is that feverish, vile, villainy hate, like people rubbing their mustache going <laughs> when it comes to Xbox, right? Yeah. They really want it to fail. They're like that old school villain, tying it up and leaving it on the train tracks. <laughs> they want it to fail. Everything that happens that, that isn't like how it's supposed to be or if it's not running great or that one. Remember the Titanfall 2 thing when that patch was bad at first? Boy, did they run with that, oh, right? Yeah. It was the yeah. worst thing ever. Holy shit. Duck and cover. Xbox X is done. And then we find out, you know, oh, they fixed a patch and now it's like sh it shits all over the PS4. Well, you know, though, reason. crap, and I'll, get a, I'll give Dealer credit. He's not here, but Dealer said this. You know, they uh, Digital Foundry Frauds. didn't wait. Yeah, Digital Foundry didn't wait one minute, right? The minute that they bad did. patch, <laughs> they put a video out right away. We don't, we don't really know, do we, Tom? No, no, we don't, Tom. We have no idea what the hell is going bloody on hell. over there. What in the bloody world is going on over there? I'm not really sure. Let's talk to Vince. Um, so they went and did that. And then like two days later, they fixed the damn thing. And then they do a video and they're like, you know, a five second thing. And they're like, in case you didn't miss it, we were wrong. And the respawn had an oopsie doopsie. Dude, you want to know what? how fast were they to do the fucking frame rate test and stuff and the and all that on PUBG? It came out yesterday. Yeah. And now they already did it. Now, hold on. When I'm, I'm looking and I don't see any God of War uh, frame rate test, God of War resolution test on there. I don't see anything. Detroit become human. Didn't earlier like wasn't digital foundry running tests on shit that microsoft was showing at e3 like pulling it right off the board and testing it yeah right 
So, I mean, look, why is it okay to go and rush and get this shit out there on the Xbox One X, but they don't do that to PS4? And that's what I worried about the most, right? Like, I don't care. Like, they can say, oh, the game runs like crap. You know what's funny was, I didn't get a chance. I've had the game for a little bit. I didn't get a chance to jump in it until yesterday after they had server maintenance. And supposedly, a lot of the people that thought it was like frame rate issues was really just server lag. So I hit server lag a couple of times. wasn't a big deal. The frame rate felt fine to me. Uh, the game overall responded pretty good. There's a couple glitches here and there. But it's like it's a preview that, that, game. That makes sense why people yeah. were getting various uh, different performance depending on where they yeah. were at, right? I was noticing like certain people are like, hey, I'm getting crappy quality here. And then other people are saying, I'm getting it just fine. So... I, that that makes a lot more sense, you know, in regards to all that. But back to like Digital Foundry, like there's very few things I hate, and one of them is is Digital Foundry. I, yeah. I don't like them if they they're liking on the X or yeah, I don't like them in either direction. Yeah. PlayStation liking or hating on PlayStation, I, I just don't like them because here's here's the reality is they're they're amateur hour. They're yeah. judging stuff before it's out. If you're doing yeah. that, you don't get it. Simply, you do not get it, and how optimization or how performance actually works simple as that and you know you, you would see this you know before PUBG. this is like way before PUBG, right you you would see it like on the halo 5 beta that's eight months out right 720p right? yeah you would, you <laughs> yeah. would see it when they would take they would capture footage from a stream from e3 and then analyze that footage and in you know kind of claim what the performance is on a particular game on a particular piece of hardware like those sort of things are not professional simple as that it's actually to the point and it's honest truth right and they've admitted it so you can actually go dig in on digital foundry to go find this um when they were testing destiny on on the uh, pc they admitted that basically bungie did not trust them to take their capture equipment to record the footage the industry does not trust them, you know. So, put that in perspective, right? You, you know, I, I'm not going to ever use Digital Foundry is is a talking point to you know hold one game above an, another or one platform above another another platform. You, you kind of have to just at this point, like it's been several years. We got to look them at as what they are. They use software to count the pixels for them. They look at uh, crib sheets to analyze what they're looking at. So half the time they have to look it up before they even do the video and they're not testing final games. Yeah. yeah. What's the point? And I, I, I'll just add this last two and then I'm going to move on. I'll let the boys take over from the PUBG. But my last two thoughts are one, I would definitely be more critical of this. If again, this was a game being built by a major AAA publisher or a developer, like say infinity ward or Bungie or, or 343 or somebody that has a really high pedigree but this is not being made by a quote unquote triple a dev i mean they're a fairly small dev maybe have grown in size now but uh you know this is not a developer who who has 20 years of amazing games behind them like they're fairly new i think even those guys if you had to ask them would probably say that they're absolutely blown away and probably overwhelmed with how big PUBG has gotten much like the dude who made minecraft was friggin floored uh, how that game grew and, and became too much for the guy. That's part of the reason he sold it because it turned into a monstrosity, uh, which is where this is kind of going, you know, so, so give credit where credit is due, but also, you know, keep your expectations in check is the main thing. And second of all, and this is the one thing I will say now that is more, and I might be the only guy who feels like this way, but now after playing in PUBG a little bit, at least, I honestly don't know how this game was nominated for a game of the year award. That that's the biggest insult I find personally nominating this game now, maybe in a year or time and a year's yeah. time nominated. It's not but even right officially now, released is the big problem yeah, that I had, you know, to me, a, that's an insult to the other devs who put so much work into a fully polished, amazing games like Nintendo and, and uh, the guys at Gorilla games, that were, like all of those other games, like, I, I, I'm not knocking PUBG, essentially just saying that it shouldn't have been in the game of the year category. Maybe next year when it is, say, a disc release, it's polished, it's 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 a full game, but just too many issues here to, to be like, man, this is like a game of the year. Like, I don't even know how it got in there. Well, Newf, that's a fair criticism because even Blue Hole, and they, they admitted they shouldn't be there either, right? So, like, yeah. it's it's not like they're like, hey, I mean, they took the reward, the reward, 
to sort of the, the, re, the reward award, awards uh, for, yeah. for you know just to be polite right but at the end of the day they said they shouldn't be there yeah um and the, and the rest of the industry kind of agrees with what new's saying and you know that's that's the thing is we're people are blowing things out of proportion right because once you win the, the award like that and then people are like oh i gotta get this game well you don't gotta get it yeah if you want to get yeah. it you you can get it i mean that's that's what it really really comes down to and, and just keep the perspective if you do buy it the the performance is going to fluctuate no matter what the hardware is no mm -hmm. matter what the program pro uh, preview program we're talking about. We, we can talk about Steam. We can talk be talking about Xbox. Doesn't matter. So one day it's going to be good, and other days it's not going to be as great. Yep. It's, it's a mod. It's a, isn't that just a mod to a game anyway? Yeah. Like, so that's what I hear. It's built on Unreal, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is Arma. It wasn't a builder on Arma or something like that. Or Daisy. Is isn't it like the same yeah. kind of mod as Daisy or something? Right. I, all I know is it's on. It's built on Unreal Engine. That's the reason yeah. why the you know. The guys over at Epic and them had a little bit of a tiff. Uh, yeah, on and all. That. And then Epic was like, "Hey, we're gonna take your idea and put it on our game." And they're like, "Go ahead." And now it's like this big thing. Yeah. So. <laughs> but you know what? That, that all it did was help them. <laughs> you know, at the end yeah. of the day, right? Is it's that you know that's let's copy them. Let's be a little bit more flat. It flatters what PUBG is, right? And they see success. They're both gonna see success and because of that and honestly what i'm excited about and i think anybody regardless of what platform you're you're part of you should all be excited this is pushing servers to a whole new level yeah. right the expectation is going much 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 higher with all this sort of stuff so if they get this stuff figured out games like this there yeah. are benchmarks that push things we're going to see the benefit across the board on all games because people are going to learn from what what the you know blue hole is doing and they're also going to learn what epic is doing with with their stuff so i mean yeah. it's a good thing for gaming in general yeah hey we got over 600 watching please hit that like button i appreciate it i'm sure these guys appreciate it we're here doing our best to entertain and put on a good show there is actually a lot of stuff to talk about we also have like the psx stuff i know that i kind of touched on that personally um but i would like some other thoughts as well like i wasn't expecting much with this stuff uh, and my even with expect expectations in check and very low, uh, they were really below that even, right? Like when Mark Cerny and Adam, uh, no, what the hell's his name? Uh, Andrew House, yeah, did that little state. I fell asleep literally. That's no joke. Uh, I was out, and then I rewatched it the well, next day. You know, uh, and I know you might want to jump subjects here, crap. But you know, give a shout out to Mister One Hundred who's in the chat. You know, what's up, One Hundred? One Hundred's like, if you don't want it, that's fine. You don't have to buy it. But he's like, for God's sakes, we're talking about thirty dollars, people. I mean, it's it's thirty bucks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dig like, around in them couch cushions, man. You can find it. You can do it. I'm sure. I shit you not. Lunch at Panera, okay? That you pick Dude, two. Lunch at McDonald's. It's just it's twenty six dollars yeah. for two people. Two you pick twos and two soft drinks. Twenty six dollars. <laughs> that was over in fifteen minutes. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? I don't understand. Yeah, like, you buy, you buy a couple. You don't want to be a part. Beer, yeah, good, you don't want to be a Jesus. part of this whole thing. That's fine. But you can't sit there and be like, oh, you know, man. Like the guys on IGN. Oh man, I can't believe we're playing this on Xbox. Hey, PC so much. PC so much better. You had a nine month run at it. Nine months. They've been optimizing that thing on there for nine months. It's been twenty. It was twenty four yeah. hours when IGN did the stream. Not even. It was like eighteen hours had gone by. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? You said, I mean, you can't is, even get a decent hand job. This, for is supposed to, this is supposed to be a gaming news channel. And you look foolish to me when you put two people on that are that, that, that don't make any sense. It's like tipping the scales. You're going to yeah. give one platform nine months. It was a piece of shit when it came out on a PC. Remember, people were complaining it about is. it. People it was a buggy piece of shit. It. And yeah. now it's like, OK, so we have a few bugs here and there. But it runs fairly deep. And, you know, the, the guys on Digital Foundry even said it. Once you get out of the airplane, once you jump out of the bomber and you go down and you, you parachute down, it's pretty much 30 frames. It dipped down to like 25, 24, then it went back up to 30. It was, it, it's it's not, the, it was one day. So yeah. I just, I just, one, the, guys, here's the deal. One day, 30 bucks. If it's not for you, move on. If you're a PlayStation guy, you got Knack 2. If you're a PC guy, I don't know. You probably got a new circuit card or a motherboard or a new fan to buy. <laughs> I don't know. You know, enjoy that. Do what you yeah, got to do. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're not wrong. That's the thing. Like people, it, it's optional stuff. It's like when people are bitch about my channel, right? Like, 
I always, you know how I usually get them to shut up is I, it's optional content. That, that's optional game to buy. You don't have to buy that game and play it. Right. Don't play it. Who cares? You don't have to watch my channel. There's nothing forcing you to do it. Yeah. For right? every one of you that are not buying it, uh, numbers are showing that five people are. So yeah. who cares? Well, he, he, you know, here's the other thing too. P people like are acting like people are saying, "Hey, I got PUBG, I got an Xbox One X," and you have somebody over. That's the game you pop on to show off your X. No, that's this is not the game that we do turn on the, the show off our X, right? You know, you put in Gears. You you there's other showpiece titles. Those oh my god, ones. put in put in Assassin's Creed Origins. That just got a new update with better textures. Put in exactly. Uh, yeah, put in Shadow of War. That game has 4K textures. Put in a Gears of War 4. Uh, even I mean, you could even, if you want to show off the bigger difference, put in Halo 3 once. Like, Jesus, that game looks amazing at 4K, you yeah, know? That's, like That's the thing. Is we can spend an hour booting up different games, showing somebody that comes over to our place, right, and showing off what the X can do for, for an hour. Like, like, literally just popping one game after another, after another, after another, right? PUBG is something you put on because it's fun. You know, yeah. that's that's why people are playing it, right? Yeah. Simply, Look at the Switch, it's, it's right? Fun. What are people asking for mainly on the Nintendo? They want the virtual console. They want that store. They want to be able to play these yeah. old games on a Or Switch. they're playing something like Zelda, which to me isn't graphically impressive, but people are like, man, it's fun. You know, running out of breath and breaking those sticks. That's that's amazing. Game of the year, folks. You had you had Colin Moriarty <laughs> saying Resogun was his favorite game for the first for two, two years, years of the PS4. Because there was no other games. That game looked like Zaxxon had a kid with Super R-Type. <laughs> like, you give know, me you a know, break. You guys know that Link was scheduled to accept the award on stage at the Game Awards, but he got tired walking up the steps, right? <laughs> <laughs> that I got that. Uh, yeah, well, I'll get into that. Yeah, I got that game for uh, Hellhammer for Christmas, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> He's a big Zelda fan, though, so hey, he ain't here, and he don't watch my stuff. So I mean, that shows you what a brother I have, right? Like that dude, he, he, he never watches any of my stuff ever, like ever, ever. You know, are we still on the PSX thing? Because I'll just, I'm, I'm going to keep. Yeah, it short we didn't even me, talk but, about it. Yeah, PSX. What are your thoughts? Uh, PSX person, look, and, and being a, a PlayStation owner, PlayStation fan myself, I mean, I got to call it. It is what it is. But um, you know, personally. It would have been a good show like two years ago. Because here's the thing, and this is and this is why it's not a good idea to always show your cards early, which means your big games early. Because then what have you got really left to talk about at the E3 and then Paris Games Week, yada, yada, yada. The list goes on and on. There's so many shows now in the run of a year. Sony's generally involved in all of them. So what are you going to expect? Like, we didn't really see anything, and they didn't even drop release dates to kind of you know, give people sort of a concrete date to get excited. But it's just like, yeah, it's coming next year. It's coming next year. Well, tell us something we didn't know three years ago that it's coming next year, the year after, the year after that. I mean, you know, there were some good trailers. There's some cool stuff. I like that one, Dreams by Media Molecule. There was some really good stuff. And I mean, I'm really excited about God of War. I think you are crap as well. But you know, I'm excited, excited for the that. game, right? Like people you know? mis misunderstood when I was like, hey, I think that Sea of Thieves has the opportunity to sell more long term and to be a bigger thing for a longer period yeah. of time um i'm excited for god of war i i'm not 100 percent sold on the whole father thing you know what i mean like where you take your kid around and stuff like i think that might like i i'm happy they changed the camera angle and stuff because one of the things i hated about god of war was it was a fixed camera angle yeah, i hated that too. and sometimes your character but, would get super tiny right <laughs> yeah when it would even... pan out yeah you know yeah. i mean crap my whole thing with that discussion is just whether okay so PUBG right PUBG is uh, basically a new IP whatever yeah. this that but it's such a phenomenon with the whole PC and the news and the media carrying it for the past nine months we knew we said it on MNC that it would do very well on Xbox what I'm saying to you is that God of War just has the tradition it has that that lore that whole thing behind it so it it's not fair it's not even and this isn't a you're you're right or you're wrong it's got nothing to do with that it's not fair to put Sea of Thieves against God of War. It's also they not fair not even go against each other. <laughs> well, the game, first of all, there's so many things that are just wrong about the competition, right? The games are not the same genre. The game, one's a new IP, one's an absolute, is, is a classic for PlayStation. You know, it's like comparing Halo Master Chief with uh, Parappa the Rapper. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, it doesn't make any sense. It, yeah. it, it's two different worlds. So, I mean, God of War is going to sell extremely well. That doesn't mean that you like it. It doesn't mean that you're going to buy it. It doesn't mean you're going to play it. It means it's just going to do 
extremely well. There's people in the chat right now that are still sitting here being like, PUBG, 12 and a half frames. Okay, you know, like, all right, whatever, dude, whatever you're saying. But my point is, like, you can't sit there and be like, you know, God of War, Dad of War. I I understand you, but people are going to go out with the PlayStation. There's a lot of people that bought PlayStations yeah. two years ago just because this was a pipe dream coming down the line. So they're buying it regardless. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Like, what, anytime you see people talking about the frame rate of PUBG and their PlayStation, dude, they're, that's just jealousy, you know, because they right. talk about us not having games. And what have they had recently, right? We've had Forza Motorsport 7, whether, uh, whether it's your thing or not, these games that I'm naming are things that we had that PS4 owners don't. Forza right. Motorsport 7, Super Lucky Tales, Cuphead, PUBG. These are games that you can't play on PlayStation 4. Bottom line. And what Sony's gotten is that terrible GT Sport, which um, really did bad, and Knack 2, which nobody's talking about Knack 2 because nobody cares about Knack no. 2, right? The only reason that game got greenlit was because Mark Cerny made help create the PS4. That's it. I guess you got to get some kind of uh, props for doing that, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, Sony fans have been playing dog shit Willy, dog piss Willy for the past six months. Uh, you had Horizon Zero Dawn, hooray. Right. Uh, you had some Uncharted DLC, uh, some games that you most people didn't even buy. Right. You know, and then you bragged about it. You even bragged about stuff like Hellblade, and 250,000 people out of 70 million consoles bought that game on PS4, right? GG. You know you know what I'm saying? Like, they talk right. out of their ass 99% of the time. Right. Uh, all PS4 gamers apparently have PS4 Pros and... Uh, fifteen hundred dollar PCs because they can play all Xbox exclusives on PC, and they got these great PCs, but yet they play all fucking right. multiplats on their well, PS4s. Well, listen, you know the, the, that back, makes zero sense. Back to Milky, so Milky Ways asking me a question. He says, "Remember the Xbox's PUBG was in development before it came out and was funded by Microsoft?" Uh, no, uh, it didn't. Microsoft's deal came about that we're aware of publicly in June. That doesn't mean they weren't talking behind the scenes beforehand. But the deals all kind of came together, you know, let's just say April, May, June. That doesn't mean that in April, May, June, Microsoft sent over a fleet of people to kick the door down and be like, now this is our shit and started cracking their knuckles, getting to work. That's not how it went. Plus, you can see there's tremendous pride in the people at Blue Hole. Uh, they don't really want to just relinquish and release this thing quite yet unless they get like a super check. So there's been a little bit of this and that. Microsoft saying, hey, we'll help you with this. We'll help you with that. We want to see this thing do really well. They know it's going to do really well on PC and Xbox. It's a good way for them to have both of their big platforms do well with this. Um, so I, I'm not really sure where you're going. You're like, this is fishy. There's some people that are like, well, Microsoft had, you know, uh, the coalition over there. The coalition got there like four weeks ago. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't understand what everyone's talking yeah. about. These <laughs> deals went down over the past three, four months. Yeah, it's not. Here's the thing, right? I think it was like, remember, it was like they announced PUBG or whatever at what, E3? Right, because yes. we saw Mikey Barra playing that game. That's the thing that Mikey Barra was always playing that game. He's like, I'm going right. to stream some PUBG. Um, and so that's what he does. And then they announced that it's coming. And then at that point, it kept on picking up steam. It's like 12 million, 14 million, 15. And then like ever since it started hitting those numbers, you saw Microsoft become more and more involved with this game. And now it's right. like published. They're using Azure servers on PC and Xbox. Uh, you know what I mean? They're sending people over to help well, uh, get the game up and running on Xbox. Uh, that, and guess what? Props to Microsoft for doing that. Because at the end of the day, a blue hole isn't a a, a seasoned developer, right? right. They're a, they're a new developer, so you send some coalition people over there to help them out. You know that's well, what you do. You, you, this goes to the whole thing. You know, people always say, "Hey, just throw a bunch of money at them," right? Well, yeah. no, it takes more than money. They need what else do you got for me, right? And this is mm -hmm. it comes to expertise and servers, right? Uh, and that's what Microsoft has to offer Blue Hole. But back to PSX, I want to talk about the fact that. We're going into the new year, and we do not have a God of War release date. Yeah, that concerns me because if if your game is coming out, if God of War is coming out before E3, wouldn't PSX be the place you would announce it? That's what I thought. Good thing. You, you, so there's really mm -hmm. not a good time to announce. Now it's a, if it if you do, it's going to fall a little more flat than it would on PSX, right? Yeah. So this leads me to believe they don't have really a solid date down. They don't for which which win. game, Don? God of War. No, they don't. They, they don't, and that's and that's where I'm coming at. So, you know, don't expect God of War in the first quarter. Expect it possibly after E3. Now they said early 2018, but the problem is, I had the same thought as you, Don, which was 
Microsoft announced the Sea of Thieves release date, right? Um, and it's March 20th. The rumor was March for God of War, and I thought for sure that they would announce that at the at the game or at uh at at PSX, and they didn't, right? So the fact that supposedly this game's going to release in a few months and they haven't really announced it, that should be worrying. If yeah. I'm a PlayStation it, fan, I'm like, it really hmm. should be. I mean, you know, you make sure the game's done before you release it. Like, do, yes. do it right, do it, do it justice. <clears throat> like, I, I'm rooting for that for the PlayStation. Yeah, game. but you know, don't don't be bragging about it right now. Just yeah. hold tight until tell, <laughs> tell they're till they're ready. In, in yeah. regards to that. And and I don't think it really has anything to do with Sea of Thieves and, and those two games being in the same window because. They're different customer bases, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think if you guys were paying attention, I don't know if you guys were following uh, All Day Digital and some of his tweets, but he was at PSX, right? And I think one of the things he was saying, he was actually shocked that for some of these games being, uh, you know, quote unquote, so close to coming out, there wasn't actual like playable demos. Most everything was just video footage of a demo that was being played before, but not like open to the floor, which is also kind of concerning. Yeah, well, I said this. They've had a lot of problems with getting their first-party games out this generation. Um, and if you look at them, everything's had some kind of delay. Supposedly, I, I would think if that game was coming out in March, you would have announced it already. That's three months away. You want to get people in there to pre-order, right? Oh, um, absolutely. That yeah, would there's be, a chance that this is probably getting delayed out. It could be. Yeah, it could be later. And then they, like, who knows, right? Like, it, it could definitely get delayed. Um, we see that happen all the time. Not only that, but... I and I've said this a lot, and it's not because I want it, right? Because I would never wish that. I'm not like some of you ass buckets out there that hope for failure from something, right? I don't hope that on PlayStation's part because I have a PlayStation. I want good games. I actually would love a couple of games to play on it. You know what I mean? Um, besides VR, because that's basically what it's turned into is my VR box. Uh, now, Spider Man is another one, right? Sony has not put out a big AAA title like that for the holidays the entire generation of the PS4. So I'm very suspect that that game is going to get pushed into spring of 2019 uh, f for that fact. You know what I mean? Plus, supposedly they're coming out with what? Detroit and um, also, what is that? Days Gone? Yeah, Days Gone. Yeah, supposedly that's on tap for 2018. Where are these games going to fit in? Because they're not going to release them on top of each other. No, they're not. I mean, I, so. I think you make some strong points, crap. I think that I think Days Gone is probably, we're probably looking at Days Gone I would say that's going to be a. I would think that would be a spring release, and I think you're right that Spider Man, Spider Man or God of War will get pushed to fall. Yoshida said um, that it's going to be that Days Gone is coming out this year, 2018. So, you mean? Yeah, yeah. And I well, said yeah, that. I, mean, I think spring yeah, sorry, 20, 2018, spring 2018 yeah. will be Days of uh, Days Gone, and I think God of War gets pushed to the fall. Yeah, I mean, I I think that could I think that could absolutely yeah, happen. Spider Man is Spider -Man completely miscellaneous. Nobody has any idea with that game. Nobody has any yeah. idea at all. As a matter of fact, with the way it's looking and the way it's playing, I can see it being one of those games that's just really super great to look at. Like it's really pretty to look at, but at the same time, it's going to be a six seven hour campaign of just you know web flinging. <laughs> flying here and there, QTEs, and call it a game. Web flinging. Yeah, he's web like, flinging. That's, uh, <laughs> Let me just fling some web. Web fling <laughs> from here to web fling over there. I mean, listen, I got to be Even the Spider-Man movies are starting to get, like, I watched Homecoming, and I thought Homecoming was fun, but you know what made Homecoming so good? Was Michael Iron Keaton. Man. Oh, Michael Keaton say. and, and yeah. Tony Stark. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, that's who made the movie for me. It wasn't really Spider-Man. So, I mean, like, for me, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not a Spider-Man fan yeah. over the top. But, like, I just, I don't know. I watched Homecoming. I laughed. I enjoyed it. But, yes, Michael Keaton was stellar. Great to see Michael Keaton back, huh? I mean, yeah, I'm, an 80s, I'm an 80s guy, and we grew up with Michael Keaton. <laughs> exactly. Go watch well, that know, movie, The Founder. That fucking movie's awesome. I with love him. that movie. I said that Microsoft needs to watch that. They're executives, dude, because he had some – that dude, like, that's how you do some business right there. You know, oh, yeah. I, that. I was like, that was I was like that's amazing. But what was really funny, and I think I told you this, Mooch, was um, during his part, because he played the Vulture in that Homecoming. Yes. He was doing. He kept on saying, "I'm Batman," and doing like Batman lines throughout, like behind the scenes. And oh, shit. he it was. was like, yeah, it was like really <laughs> funny. That like made my enjoyment of that movie much better when I knew that. Because yeah. can you imagine yeah. you're doing this movie with Michael Keaton and he's going around doing Batman lines, like uh, joking around <laughs> and stuff like that? That would be awesome to me. Because um, 
What's really funny is whenever you ask him, I don't go off into something that's not even game related, but whenever people <laughs> ask him who Batman is, he always says it's him. You know what I mean? I grew up like that. He was Batman. He you is. Know? Like, he so really is. Yeah, he did great such movie. a good job. Yeah, he did such a good job in those. So it's always funny to, to kind of think of that. Uh, what did you guys think about Mark Cerny saying you need to play Death Stranding for like <laughs> four to five hours? <laughs> well, wait, was, he, was, he, was he joking or was he not? No. No, I don't he was think not so. joking. I, I he, he does, really Mark Cerny doesn't have a funny bone. He doesn't have a body. funny bone, no. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, like, that's, special. No, that's breaking news. Well, so there's playable game there? Like you apparently make- he said yeah. internally there's playable yeah. game right yeah. so that's well that's that's good news for it like that's that's further along than I personally thought from well, what you were showing well guys I we- just wanted to say that uh, originally I greenlit No Man's Sky as well and it took me four hours to figure out that we were in space so oh come on, <laughs> on now <laughs> <laughs> that was actually very good Oh, hey, you know what's funny is when people in the chat are like 70 million versus 30 yeah. million Xbox One. Dude, yeah, Xbox One was Xbox like 30 goes million up. years ago, right? Like, yeah. dude, come on. <laughs> that was like a year and a like, half ago. Well, I remember for the longest time they were saying 18 million, and at least it's gotten up to 30 now with them. It's you know? up to 30 <laughs> now. Yeah. It's great. It's, it's so stuck on 30. Though. We seem to be like going backwards in our numbers. There's goes up. <laughs> Every time an Xbox now. One is sold, an angel <laughs> loses <laughs> its wings. <laughs> yeah, so I you got to you gotta watch out. Uh, this just in another Xbox one sold and yeah. angel just lost his wings. Damn you, Microsoft, you suck. Uh, yeah. but yeah. Okay. So he said, you need to play death stranding four to five hours. Now, listen, uh, Kojima overrated. I'm, I said it. Oh yeah. Right. Metal gear solid one. I liked, uh, that was back in the day on the PS one. Uh, that was probably the first game that I did like an all nighter on, uh, me and my friends, we stayed up all night and played it and beat it. Uh, good time. Right. Metal gear solid two. I liked it. Metal gear solid three. I liked it. Four, they really wrote themselves in the corner with that horrible like story. He's old. He's you know blah blah blah. It was terrible. I didn't like it. Metal Gear Solid Five bad. I think he's done like Zone of Enders, couple you know some bad shit. Not really my jam. But um, I do have to say, no interest in Death Stranding. And the people that are like, oh man, this I'm really interested in this. And I'm like, what are you interested in? Man, it's so unique. It's it's unique. It's 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 strange and weird. And you're like, what are you talking about? What kind of game is it? Is it a First person shooter, third person. Is it a sports game? Is it a real time strategy game? Is it a QTE game like Detroit Become Human? What kind of game? Well, I don't know, but it looks good because it's it's strange. And well, I'm like, well, well like, what's the point? What's the character? What what do you do? I don't know, but uh, I'm just it's a day one buy. You know, <laughs> it's like you can't. So I, yeah. I don't get it. Back on that same note, though, like you know, I was genuinely excited when you said, "Hey, you have to play it for five hours." So that means they actually have played it. I want to see gameplay, and and I'm not joking when I say this. Like, I get excited when I see gameplay, right? You can give me yeah one premise. Tra- like, the formula for me is you you got to give me you can only give me one CG trailer or one in-game engine trailer. You get one. Yeah. After that, you start losing me more and more. You start showing me without any. Well, Sony lost you in 2016. Then this no. is yeah, the third. Really this is no, the no, that's third not a joke. Trailer. No, I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. So, so my thing is like, why didn't they show gameplay? If they say it makes sense five to six hours, why didn't they show that? And it could have been a little snippet or a clip or whatever. But just you know, just give us a little hint. Hey, yeah. that's gameplay. Something with a little bit of a HUD, that sort of thing. And just so you can just get the imagination started. That that's what I needed to be excited for Death Stranding because it's really easy to criticize, right? Oh, yeah. this, this, and this. But what would take you to be excited about the game? And personally, for me, I needed to see some sort of gameplay. And more, if they do this E3 and they show me another CG trailer, I'm out. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. care. They you might know, not I- show any any footage from it because they've been very sporadic with how they do it right uh because they what happens is and you probably know this don is that you get fatigue uh like i was having uh sea of thieves fatigue oh yeah like the only way that it was ex- uh, acceptable for them to show anything at the game awards see if these related in my opinion was a release date and they did that so yeah. bravo i did not want to see just random new sea of thieves footage you know like i had no interest in that um now when it comes to uh this this is the third trailer that we've seen cgi we have no clue what the game's about, no clue what type of game it is, no clue about anything, no clue if it's close to being done or not close to being done, um, a release year approximate. We have no information on this game, and yet you have people out there claiming that they're excited by it. Uh, yeah. I think they're kind of full of shit. 
uh, the people that are like, hey, I'm, I'm super excited about this. I think that people um, just really, I, I think Kojima is super overrated, and it's not because it's not on Xbox. I have a PlayStation 4. I mean, I'm sure I'll have a PlayStation 5 when that game releases. Uh, you know what I mean? But it just it's one of those games that I have no interest in. Yeah. None it's whatsoever. Just, we've seen multiple trailers that all they do at this point in time is leave more questions than answers. And like the Don said, we haven't seen a snippet of actual gameplay, which is... Yeah. You know, kind of disturbing. I mean, especially if this game is supposed to be relatively close to coming out, like nobody has any idea. Like, uh, come on. I mean, if there's anybody, there's people in the chat that are going off in here, like they understood everything that happened on that screen. Like, I am freaking sorry. Like, nobody knew. Not even Norman Reedus knew what the hell he was acting yeah. in, for freak's sake. He's just like, yeah, I'm just here on stage to look I'm, cool. I'm, I'm Norman Reedus. I'm friends with these guys, but yeah, I have no like, idea. I didn't know there was going to be like some weird shit going on and with like weird little annoying things thing floating around and like big giant like things that sucking I'm, things up i don't even have any damn i mean the game, game could turn out to be game of the year material we're not debating could, that yeah, it's but not we'd have to wait and see till the game comes out like we're just saying nobody yeah. understands the trailer i mean it looks cool i mean there's great cgi and some cool actors and stuff and and there's some principles there that sound kind of seem cool but nobody really understands it yeah so no, I Don mean, makes a know, good point. You're allowed one CGI, okay? You're allowed one. <laughs> yeah. Once you start going over the CGI count, you 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 start to get spe it's, it's it's a spectacle because you're like, well, wait a minute, what? Why are you taking a major stage again and showing me some demo? Like it, it's just Sony is smoke and mirrors, guys. There's smoke and mirrors, and it was funny. You know how we said uh, Xbox is at thirty million. The the two or three like clowns in the chat that are like you know <laughs> that are like the Sony guys. Some of them are now taking the 70 million, just went to 75. So oh, con congratulations, damn. Sony. You went up to 5 million in, within three minutes. That was cool. And Microsoft, Xbox actually went down to 28 million in the chat. Oh, damn. Yeah. Just in that amount of time. Just in about just... four minutes, crap. Sony wow. went up by 5 million and, and Xbox lost 2 million. That's amazing. Hey, did some of those other exclusives amazing. happen to sell anything else while in the, in the meantime? Did PUBG yeah. sell less suddenly? I don't know. Because, yeah, PUBG is at mean, under 100,000 now. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. So, so right? I, I like how yeah. that switches around. And NAC two probably up to almost three copies sold now. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. There. That sounds real legit. Okay. This just <laughs> it. That stranding is about the secret love life of Kojima and Jeff Keighley all Jeff rolled Keighley. into a sci-fi oh. romp. That's their hey, baby. Well, let me ask you guys this: Do you think Sony maybe should have focused? Because everybody is like, Microsoft needs to do their own PSX. They need to do that. They need to do this. And I'm like, listen, if PSX taught me anything is that the only way more uh, of these shows make sense is if you have stuff to actually show. And Sony had dicked the show. And it, it showed, you know, it was nothing. That was some, that was basically their X-Fest or whatever or their Xbox um, thing, and they advertised it. Imagine if Microsoft uh, televised their thing on YouTube, you know what I mean, their uh, Fan Fest or whatever that is. That's basically what that is. You, you know, know, honestly, yeah. what, what I would have wanted from Sony... Um, you know, as a gamer, right? You know, take off the dead yeah. hat, turn, put on the gamer hat, right? I wanted everything they showed at Paris, at E3, along with their third-party deals, yeah. And around Paris Games Week, you know, around that sort of time, um, do the PSX for the games that are coming out this year, and throw a show for your for your fans, and maybe one minor tease, nothing, yeah. Even, yeah, nothing more than that, and. You know, and I honestly would say even take the stuff that you had at um, the Game Awards, Kojima saying, and roll that to the E3. You know, that would have been a banger E3 for Sony, right? I mean, it would have been some smoke and mirrors, but it yeah. would have been laced with, with some games that they had deals with, right? It would keep the PlayStation 4 Pro relevant in that particular situation. They should have spent all their eggs in that basket and not spread it out throughout the three you know those three different times throughout the year yeah because right now going into next year like you're a playstation fan you know you're getting something down the road you don't know when or if it's mm -hmm. going to be in that calendar year and that's that's what's scary to me like you know you know i just got a pro not too long ago and i only have one game on it right now and and i'm like ooh, did i buy it too early like i don't know when this stuff's going to come out and yeah so, it, it, it's i don't know like i understand what they try to do and they're trying to make their system relevant throughout the whole entire year i, I yeah. know why why they're doing what they're doing but sometimes you also have to be able to make a splash right and you know sometimes less is more 
if you just consolidate it all in one spot. And that seems to be Microsoft's strategy. And we'll see how it pans out this E3 between the two two big juggernauts. But, I mean, what do you expect to see at this E3 from Sony after seeing PSX? Are they holding back? Or they just don't have anything additional to show? I don't think they had anything. Like, if you guys remember when I was talking about E3 this past year, I said, well, we might see Sucker Punch's thing. Uh, and we ended up seeing that at um, Paris Games Week. That should have been an E3 thing, right? Because yeah. as it was, their E3, and people don't believe this, right? Their E3 couldn't have been more disrespectful. They almost were watching, the, looking at their watch the entire show. Like, hey, what's up? Here we are. Yes, we're winning. We're kicking ass. Uh, here's the same stuff we showed you last year, but with people hanging from the ceiling and a, and a, and a different band. You know? It was like, it, it was. I was like, holy crap, it's really over. And they showed exactly the same stuff. Here's a remaster of a game that hardly anybody knows about or cares about. Uh, what the hell is that game? Uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Woo! You know, like, great. How is that an announcement for E3? Oh, here's Medieval Remake. Woo! Like, yeah. how is that? Where's that Final Fantasy VII? Where the fuck was that? That was like that was like the news that made E3, what, three years ago or something? Yes. I was like, whoa, with Final Shenmue. Fantasy Remake. With Shenmue, Where the hell right? is that? Yeah, with Shenmue. Oh, stop six, Doc, with the 20 spot. That's what's up. That's what did I'm talking guys, about. Did you guys I see? I, I missed it, but Aaron Greenberg just uh, replied back. I guess our good friend Ryan McCaffrey, the ex Xbox guy at IGN, came out <laughs> and made a comment uh, that you know he's just surprised and shocked that Microsoft would launch the game in its current status. And then, of course, you know he's got he's got to do a zing, and then he's got to do his thing so that way he can cover himself. He comes out two minutes later and says, "That said, it will get much better." It's a shame that Xbox players who've heard so much about the game as first exposed to this <laughs> have to deal with it in this state, even though it's clearly labeled game preview. And then Aaron Greenberg goes, we appreciate the feedback, Ryan. We've tried our best to make it clear to folks that the game this game is in game preview uh, and it's not the finished product. Uh, we're tracking player feedback and working with the developer to continue to make the game better every week. Every yeah. week. And then Predator, shout out to you, dude. Predator takes a screenshot of what the the game preview is. It says game is unfinished and a work I in progress. I saw that, and but I couldn't the see the Ryan them. tweet because, uh, oh. surprise, surprise, I'm blocked. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, 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 lucky you. I haven't, even, lucky I, haven't, you. I haven't used IGN at all since Naomi Kyle left. Like, <laughs> like No, there's no reason to. Sorry yeah, to go no back reason. to that, but I just find it funny that you have to have Aaron Greenberg step in again to slap these – "Quote unquote uh, journalists around like what? What is so hard for these people to understand that Microsoft was able to step in? Do you notice it's not on Sony's platform? If the PS, if the X is having a hard time with it for any such reason, the Pro wouldn't be able to handle it. It would be in, in, in just, or the just base array. PS4 either. It'd be so, horrible. Right. So yeah. my point being is that it's just it's it's just mind boggling to me that these people can't understand what a, and, you know. They listen. The people that are doing all this, I don't care about the people in the chat. These guys don't matter. What yeah. I'm saying to you, like, is is like you know, well, some of them are good people in the chat. No, Woo! I meant I meant like the the, yeah. the people who say 15 frames yeah. per second. Ooh, okay. Not those people. It doesn't matter. But I'm surprised at the Destin Legarys, that guy who was the PC guy from IGN, and the Ryan McCaffreys. This is a game that's in game preview. They're well aware. They've been briefed. They've been behind door meetings with them. They know what's coming out. So to do these kinds of tweets, you know, it's just you know, it, it, it's it's absolutely mind boggling. It's mind. Well, they're acting like they're new to gaming, right? Like they, they they don't get it. Like they know that they know that what they're doing, right? I mean, they gotta know what they're doing. Like it's not like PCs that haven't been around for for a long time, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not like these sort of programs haven't existed on Steam for a long time. And it's not like the people in the office have not bragged about having preview programming games on Steam. So the expectation's already there. It's culturally, they should know exactly what to expect without yeah. Microsoft having to brief them, without anybody on the internet have to call them out. Like the expectation is you should know, right? So, you know, when they kind of get goes that shame, shame, shame on Microsoft sort of thing, you know, what Ryan should should be saying is, if he's saying that out loud, he should be shame on him, man. Like, he, you know better. You know better. And I know you know better. So, Well, first of all, and sorry to interrupt, Don, but the chat doesn't seem to understand. Uh, to all you guys in the chat that don't understand podcasting, when I say it doesn't matter, not you guys that are actually the people who give a shit. I'm talking about the five or six asshats yes. that are constantly <laughs> saying frames per second, 15 frames per second, or bust. Or right, no game. Yeah. So yeah. no, yeah. not yeah, you yeah, guys that are not you guys that are actually awesome and chill with us and hang out. I'm talking about the asshats. When I say that, because I'm talking about you have the Ryan McCaffrey's out there 
that are coming out and making these ridiculous comments and then have to have a vice president of marketing come after them and tell them what's going on again. Yeah. You know? And then the same thing I, here I, I, in the chat I, where you have these same five guys with the same thing. And then when you make a good case, what do they say? 15 frames, 15 per, frames second. per second, but you know, zero. I'm almost starting to think that Brian McCaffrey's is actually getting off on the negative criticism that he's getting because I think he's gotten more popularity out of sort of the vitriol uh, that he's created with sort of like that, I don't know, almost like anti Xbox because he was always looked at as the Xbox guy, right? He was the Xbox, you know, uh, the panel and stuff like that. And then it's like, it seems like over the last year and a half or so, like whatever the hell it is, it's like he's always like, he seems like he's taking the negative side out first and then yeah. he just puts that out there. You know what I mean? And then, and then this other guys who like for a long time, Destin Legary was kind of sort of, he was kind of seeming like anti Xbox and now he seems to be going the opposite direction. It's yeah, kind of weird. Switched. Yeah, oh, it, it is yeah. funny because I had some falling out with destin legary too and uh because he was like I, I still have these tweets somewhere because me and him got into it and uh he was like i don't do console wars crap and i tweeted back to him i was like yeah sure you don't and then i posted up that picture where he hosted the daily fix and he's holding a ps4 version that says 1080p and an xbox one version is 900p yeah. like you know one of them's higher you know i'm like sure you yeah, don't yeah, man I and, I, and then he never responded back after that but he didn't block me but I did see that he's gone all in on the X and a 4K TV. Uh, he's got the KS8000, you know, so props to him for being able to afford that in uh, California because <laughs> apparently things are tough. And, uh, you know, IGN must not be paying a lot because, shit, I can scoop dog shit. And I got me a 4K TV and an Xbox One X. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Crap's breaking it down for you. You can scoop dog shit and still get an Xbox One X. Exactly. Uh, Sony did win NPD for November, though, uh, which I, apparently they did like $1.5 million. Um, now, the interesting thing here is they actually put the PS4 Slim down to $199 um, seven, six days before black friday so they had almost a full week of that thing on sale uh where microsoft waited almost until the last minute to drop the s to what was like 179 or something like that so microsoft really kind of shot themselves in the foot uh if they really wanted to kind of win or, or pull out any kind of win there against the ps4 uh supposedly lost by like a hundred thousand or so uh the rumor for xbox one x is if you guys are wondering was seven hundred thousand is it um, tomorrow crap Something like that, yeah. We'll find out tomorrow. Seven hundred thousand yeah. uh, uh, North America, or is that worldwide? Seven hundred thousand in North America, apparently, out of the uh, almost four, like fourteen hundred total. So their biggest market, they, that's that's pretty good. And then, and then obviously they're seeing a lot of growth over in Central Europe. But hopefully, like the big win, what a lot of people don't realize too is, uh, Germany is the place to win when you're trying to win over tech over in yes. Central Europe. Um, I used to work at a company and they had a marketing strategy to try to push a particular product in, in that area. And they were having a hard time trying to push this uh, particular product in Central Europe. And so what they did is they consolidated all their efforts and, and put everything into Germany. And so once they kind of won them over, they can actually see it kind of spread from there uh, all over to Central Europe. So the fact that you've seen a lot of growth in Germany for Microsoft is something to watch out for. And, you know, if you guys are just kind of curious about how the brands was doing over there, just kind of pay attention to what's going on in that particular region and, and see how it has influence on UK, you know, Ireland, you know, all the other neighboring countries in that. In that well, country. if you remember the Xbox one X sold out in Germany, like super fast in record time or whatever, oh, like yeah. five minutes or something, uh, because they know their tech. And like that surprised a lot of people. So while it is important that Microsoft does well with the X here in the UK and stuff, seeing it do well in, in Germany and some of those other uh, territories, very, very surprising. Uh, I'm sure Microsoft had to be thrilled with that. So supposedly 700,000 here, and that's not worldwide. So you would imagine over a million worldwide for sure. Um, and a lot of those firms and stuff had to up their um, guesses as to how many Xbox One Xs they'd sell um you know this year alone uh, a lot more because a lot of people thought hey a 500 dollars console uh you had sony drop the pro to uh, buy 50 bucks it was only 350 uh you know you had the slim uh running for 199 uh you know so so what what would what advantage would somebody have by spending all that more money on an xbox one x well if you bought a 4k tv which a lot of people did 
you want something that can really showcase that. I saw, you know what, when I was out, because I did a lot of black shop uh, Friday shopping, and I picked up 4K Blu-rays and stuff. Those are some of the hottest items going. Like, you always see those things cleaned out. You know, like, people buy physical media, and after ha experiencing the movies and stuff that I've been watching um, on my ex with the 4K Blu-ray player and the 4K TV and stuff and HDR specifically, uh, there's a huge difference between that and streaming. Um, the compression is really horrible for streaming uh, movies and things like that. So uh, people buy that stuff, and that's a big selling point as well. If you have a 4K TV with HDR, you're going to want to be able to watch 4K HDR movies, play 4K HDR games. Uh, for me, I can't go back. I have a hard time going back to some of the older games that aren't enhanced on the X, right? Like, it's a me problem for sure. But it's like, I always think, well, what can I do next? Well, I'm going to do this game next. You know, Assassin's Creed done. Let me jump into Shadow of War. Like, even though there's other games that I can play, if they aren't enhanced, I'm not really interested. I'm kind of a snob now. You know, 4K HDR, once you get into that kind of situation, you don't really want to go back. Well, and so I've had a really hard time kind of dealing with that. Well, do you even have time to go to anything else? Like, there's so mm -hmm. much 4K HDR content right now on that. Yeah. Right? Like, I just finished Assassin's Creed. I'm knocked that amazing out. game yeah. by the way holy crap yeah let's knock that one out of the park i was kind of bummed i <laughs> the missed the whole texture upgrade um i but... know right like why couldn't that have been there from the beginning uh you know so when did that upgrade come out was that just, today just like yesterday? yesterday yeah yeah yesterday was a big day for just like everything PUBG. uh the dlc came out for uh resident evil um that with the uh, assassin's creed there was someone something else got oh ghost recon now that we when now we see ghost recon's got that predator there's a lot of stuff. I mean, that's it's just amazing how the just the content keeps pouring yeah, out. It, it's yeah. hit that critical mass, right? Where every developer wants to be a part of it, right? Yeah, um, they want to be relevant and show their game off the best as they possibly can. That's that's the mentality, right? So, you know, that's why like I think Assassin's Creed developers like they're like, well, okay, we'll use the extra RAM for loading, right? Because it's such a big world. And then they had a second thought. They're like, you know what? Screw it. We're doing better textures. Yeah, we're doing it right because we have the assets. They're here. I just need to scale them differently and then drop them in, right, and do the updates. So, you know, that was kind of I think their thought process. And developers are seeing success. Like, what was it? The uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yeah, that, that's got a bump not only from from the actual enhancement, but a bump in sales. Right? They're they're yeah. seeing a bump in sales in in regards to all that. So, you know this is all good for like the whole console iteration thing like um this is the x is making the console iteration thing a thing right where the the pro it had support but the support wasn't nearly as much as what you're seeing on the x right now yeah so, um it, it's a good thing i mean you're gonna see it throughout this is just the beginning we, wait until january hits wait till february hits. yeah like, you get to get it to now in e3 so expect those uh those updates to to games because especially when certain developers talk about their success of when they did an update and they start seeing a sales bump other developers are looking at everything they're doing and they're exactly doing so. and, and to, the, to those that go oh old games or whatever uh because you know that's the first thing people go to um you know what not everybody buys every game brand new when it comes out so having a game that's actually when you start playing the x and then you you're like okay what do i play now and then you see a game that maybe you were interested in but didn't buy gets an enhancement holy shit you might be on top of that because like you were saying ghost recon wildlands got uh checked out by digital foundry and they say it's a huge advantage for the one x and they were showing like the differences very muddy textures in the ps4 pro version uh just it, it just does not look very good um not only that but they advise ps4 pro owners to use a 1080p tv and not 4k because it's such a big scale between the 1440 or whatever it is and the and the 4k yeah. Uh, as as opposed to the Xbox One X, which they're like, if you're just sitting back playing distance, it's it, it can pass for native 4K. It's very crisp picture quality. Oh, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands stuff, on yeah. X is actually one of the best uh, enhanced games I personally have seen. And I yeah. think that's indicative of the game itself because the game itself is a massive world. 
there's a lot of foliage there's a lot of grass trees like there's just it, and it's just with the weather effects too when the when the mud gets wet you know from the rain and you see the dirt on the vehicle but just i remember because i i first had it and i was playing it on the on the original s right and this was before like the the 4k patches and everything and and i thought the game looked fine but it had a lot of frame rate issues and it had like uh you know it looked kind of blurry in places and things like that right you know and there's some screen tearing and there, it had little glitches here and there and that's you know after updates and stuff but on the x my god did everything just come into focus it was like seeing for the first time it was just so crisp and everything was running much much smoother and the draw distance is better and it just they did a hell of a job with that update man and if you got an x you can really see ghost recon at its best let me tell you it's it's great and i think uh, mooch would probably agree that it is impressive what, yeah, what was I mean, fun it, it, it really is something we crap. Got the game too mooch that was yeah the part like somebody gifted it to us and I was like, you know what? I wanted to play that game for a while now. It's just, awesome. You know, you know what's great about it, crap? And I don't know how much you do or don't know about it. Noof, you correct me where I'm wrong because you've been playing it way more than I have. But the game, it opens up. Yes, there's a story, but the story is uh, whatever. If you want to get in the story, you can get in the story. But there's just like the map opens up. It has X amount of like, you know, missions. You go do those missions. You get into a group of four. It could be four friends. Yeah. And, and that's the best way to do it. It's kind of like I, I said, the, it reminds me a lot of, uh, if Far Cry had a kid with GTA Online, you know, yeah. like it's an open world. You can do any of the any of the missions you want. Uh, it, it's just it's it's hysterical. It's fun to do it together. It's not overly difficult that I've found so far. I think it will get more difficult. Um, but it's just it's just a massive world. And and like Noof said, the water, the foliage, the the rocks, the textures on the rocks. The you know when we were joking around back with Uncharted Four, we were calling it that special 1080p mud. That mud doesn't hold a fucking crumb to the mud that they have in this game. Like the puddles as the truck is splashing through, all the mud splashes up on the side of the fender of the truck. It's just the detail was really put into this game. Yeah. And I gotta say, if you are thinking of a game right now that you want to play that people don't talk about, take a look, everybody at Ghost Recon. Uh, during the holiday sale, it was thirty bucks, and it, yeah. if it if it goes down to thirty again, trust me, scoop it up. And yeah. you guys, since we're on the same topic, maybe crap, you want to drop the cool news for Ghost Recon for tomorrow? Oh, there's like this new like uh, the Predator update, right? So I guess yeah. the Predator is going to be in it. Explain that, Noof. Like I saw that it's coming, but what's it mean? Yeah, so basically, you know, they've just recently added the PvP mode, which is the four and four. So now apparently you can play this by yourself or you can play with your buddies, three of your buddies, and you get dropped into a jungle, much like the original scenario of uh, the original Predator movie because they're celebrating their 30th anniversary. And basically you're got to hunt down the Predator or he hunts you. And I can imagine that's going to be pretty New, pretty are you going to do Arnold, uh, Arnold lines in that movie when you play? Because that would be absolutely. Hilarious. I'm going to have when, to. When I catch you guys running away from me, I'll be like, go, get on the job. I'm doing this thing. He's going to kill you. He's going to skin you alive. I don't want to be here. <laughs> Actually, that's one of the few. Uh, I, I really liked the Predator movie, the original one. I thought it was really good. So. Uh, pretty excited to actually kind of try this out and see what's up because. So wait, is uh, it is it a mission or is it a four v one? Uh, it's it, I I don't have all the details, but it does sound like it's four v one. It sounds like you're just dropped into the jungle, and I don't know if you've got to get to an away point or whatnot. Like again, I I don't have all the details, but I mean, just you know, just that alone sounds really fun. And apparently, I guess like the predator himself will be like harder to kill. I was reading part of the article, and they said he will be challenging, even more so if you're playing by yourself. But with your buddies, you have to figure out a way to take him down before he takes you down, and he's going to be cloaked, and he's going to be using you know his uh, heat signature vision and stuff and apparently i guess when i guess if you kill him or whatever or you play the mode you earn like his helmet and you earn the heat seeking thing for like uh when you're playing um you know when you go back into the pvp mode that stuff you will earn and you can actually use it as in-game accessories it's really cool that does sound pretty damn I'm awesome about actually. It. so yeah. about it. it sounds like Friday the 13th but yeah, yeah, but it's better because it probably works. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Yeah, well, hey, that is know, a very really well-made game. The play control and stuff in Ghost Recon as well is very solid. It, it, Colt Eastwood was saying that as well. Like it just, it's a refined game. Uh, you feel that when you play it. Not something that was rushed out, you know, and and uh, it just keeps getting better. It's too bad a lot of people just sort of kind of skipped over it because I think it came out during a time when there was just other games going on, and and it just kind of fell under the radar. I think for a lot of people. 
Yeah. The I, predator I, yeah. in the chat, he, lo he loves the game and he was playing with us as well the other day too. And yeah, he's a good guy to, to play this game with. And yeah, he likes it. Yeah. I, I, I think it looks awesome, man. And plus it's Xbox one X enhanced and looks great on there. So if you guys haven't played it, I say, go ahead and pick it up. Um, we're going to do some final thoughts on the game awards, which this is interesting. 3.8 million viewers watched it last year. 11.5 million watched it this year. That's a pretty big bump. Um, I'm happy to see this. A lot of people might go, but you complain about it a lot, crap. Well, check this out. It's still the biggest one and the only one pretty much that we have. And it was better this year than the previous years. Um, I think that hopefully Microsoft, uh, you know, what can you do? Like Microsoft had a bum year when it came to software. So you can't really like be pissed off that a lot of their stuff wasn't in there. Maybe that they didn't have a sea of thieves or something in the, uh, uh, most anticipated for next year, but at the end of the day, probably would have lost to The Last of Us 2 anyway, which is a game is not even coming out next year, but I, I did enjoy it maybe a little bit long, but um, you know, there's still a few issues there, but I still enjoyed it and thought it was a, a pretty decent show. Uh, what, what is your guys' thoughts? I think they did a good job with the crap, but I think we discussed it on Crossfire last week. I'll say it again. Uh, you know, Jeff Keighley deserves a round of applause for the amount of work that he did behind the curtain. But my recommendation to Jeff is to stay behind the curtain. And <laughs> we need a host. We need a real host. Uh, somebody. And I know you guys, it, it's definitely an ongoing joke of mine. Anyone that follows me and knows. But like like I said on Crossfire, I said, why don't we have Aisha Tyler and I, Justine, hosting this thing? Like, wouldn't you rather see two like people that like games, that are good presenters, uh, they're like entertaining to a certain degree? And it's like... I just think that would be more fun to have someone up there that's a true personality. Jeff looks like Droopy, you know? He's like, <laughs> and now we're going to go ahead and present the game of the year. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Get the <laughs> fuck out of the way. Um, you know, can somebody get up here who can smile? Um, yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I just – he's actually the best thing about this and the worst. Yeah. And I, it, it's really weird to say that because certain people don't get it. You know, and don't forget too, everybody, the Game Awards, you know what the Game Awards also has to stop doing? Be about like, you know, the Academy, the Academy and the Academy Awards is a big deal. The Academy is the people that vote. They're the ones that do this, the ones that do that. Let's stop with the media circle jerk that this thing is. Like no Andrea Renee's and Greg Miller's and Boogie's and everybody else hanging out out there and being like, oh, where are we partying later? It's supposed to be about the games, the devs. It's supposed to be about the publishers. It's supposed to be about, you know, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, uh, independent yeah. devs, things things that are just like, a, this is what the industry is all about, right? The games. And let's leave the the, the biased media out of it and 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 just get, and the ads didn't bother me. Honestly, like the ads are the ads. You got to have ads. Is there a different way to do it? Yes. Here's my other recommendation. <laughs> put in, put in regular commercials. Okay. Yeah. If Amazon wants to have a commercial, they have a million of them on TV right now. Just insert one here. It also lets us get up, make a drink, make a snack, go to the bathroom. They don't have to have the ads in between the actual award. Yeah, oh, my God, this is so great. I'm so Warframe, you, you definitely heard about Warframe after the show was over. Jeez, did it have well, like every second people, ad? It was no, Warframe? You had, you had people <laughs> standing up there, and they were like, I just want to thank like – my parents and and, and 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 the people who supported me and Taco Bell, Taco and Bell, and Amazon. <laughs> you guys were there for me. If it wasn't for my the speedy delivery and the twenty four hour Prime service from Amazon, I would never have had my tower fixed for my fans and my PC. I mean, I was like, come on, why? What are you doing? Yeah. Um. Let's just have a commercial. I understand you have to have ads, so put a damn commercial in. It's been working for TV since the 50s. Hopefully, he'll get a lot more uh, support right. now mm -hmm. that it's drawing much more people, you know. Um, it might. And I, I hopefully, you know, you get 11.5 million people watching. That might get some of the other people to step up and maybe put some reveals and stuff on there or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. I thought Nintendo, even though, like, I don't know how this panel is with Nintendo stuff, but I like Nintendo. And, you know, seeing they actually did the, hey, Bayonetta 3 is being worked on. We got Bayonetta 1 and 2 coming to the Switch. We've got, uh, you know, Zelda DLC tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was pretty cool. Yeah, like, I was yeah. wishing, that, you know, Microsoft or, you know, I don't know what the hell Sony would have done. But, um, you know, it, it was it would have been nice to see everybody on board on the same level. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, I, I still thought it was a good show. I thought, it, you know, and I, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it next year as well. 
Uh, I just I just would like to see yeah. maybe Microsoft break out a little something more than a release date for a game. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, it, I mean, kudos to them, and it's heading in the right direction. I mean, and and whether you love Jeff Keighley, you hate him. I mean, kudos to him for doing something for Absolutely. the industry to, to bring this to the forefront. Because without the game, I mean, game awards, like it or hate it, it brings a lot of attention to the medium that everybody here in the chat, everybody that's listening, everybody that's on this podcast, you know, knows and loves. It brings attention to it regardless, you know. And and um, you know, there's some things obviously that need some tweaking. I mean, maybe he needs to sit down with more. Uh, professionals from the industry, maybe the other industries like the movie business who've had like, you know, 15, 60 years to kind of uh, perfect their shows because there's a lot of similarities between the two. They kind of interconnect in some ways, you know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, you didn't need to bring Kojima up two or three times. We get it, Jeff. You like Kojima. I mean, he's a cool dev. We, we get it. But, I mean, you know, keep it on point. And, and you know, and I want to know who brought the freaking broom because somebody swept the Forza win right under the rug, didn't they? Like, come yeah, they're on. Like, hey, by the really? way, uh, best sports game slash racing game, Forza 7. Here you go. Yeah. yeah that's what I said. Like, that should have been a forefront award where those guys got up on stage and, you know, thanked their mamas and stuff. That would have yeah. been cool. Uh, it doesn't even make sense, though. Like, that's the, that's the thing I have a problem with, right? You you mix everything together. You kind of kind of shoehorn certain things like sports slash racing. Sports is different than racing. And <laughs> you race, like, that's not a fair representation of what those people are, are doing, right? And so, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't like the categories of the Game Awards. I, I can't take them seriously until they get that fixed, until they have fair representation of what's out there. And honestly, let's get the media out of the nominee process. Yeah. And let's get the developers involved in the nominee process. This happens all the time in the movie world, right? The, the not, like, people are involved in movies give awards to each other, right? Because... They have respect for one another and they they can they're probably some of the best judges of each other's works right that that's the same sort of thing i feel like it needs to happen at, at the game awards right the nominees should be because developers are gamers as well right and not all developers are actually producing games that year right mm -hmm. so there's tons of studios across the world have them do the nominees so it's not like this cultural thing that you have with certain media groups right and you actually have people that know how to judge games, know how to make games that are judging them, right? And they're actually gamers. And I think that would go a lot more to get some real respect, uh, which is what the Game Awards honestly really needs. Yep. Yeah, you know what? That's a great point. Uh, because if you look at who the people are who are voting for these things, it is 100% media. And you wonder, hey, how the hell did PUBG end up for Game of the Year? Or how the hell did Persona 5 end up for game of the year you know that game sold dog piss willy well, outside the, of japan so well, look at the landscape right now right so like it, let's say they did the nominees like how i mentioned PUBG wouldn't have been there right yeah. you yeah. know like you know it would have sold a lot it would have done really well and maybe it would have gotten into most anticipated for the following year but it wouldn't have been in any of the other nominees and i think that would have been a fair representation because even people within the gaming community that develop have all said the same thing including the developer themselves so it would totally change the landscape but i think it would take the landscape to a much more respectable uh respectable level as far as everything goes i mean it would change everything yeah i, I agree 100 yeah. percent. actually that was a very brilliant thought just because um when you look at it and and you can see some of the bias come through there too as well right like like i said after playing assassin's creed uh, Origins, how that game couldn't be in the running for Game of the Year is beyond me. I probably would have lost to Zelda anyway, so it didn't really matter. Um, but to me, get PUBG and Persona 5 out of there, put Assassin's Creed Origins and something like That's Wolfenstein right. 2 up there. You know, like games that people actually play and are familiar with and they're full games. And you know what I mean? Like that would have made a lot more sense to me. Uh, you know, it is kind of unfortunate with the way they did it, but hopefully they tighten that up a little bit. Like, oh, best game made by students. Like, that shouldn't be a award for the, <laughs> the people go up on stage for, but best racing game slash sports game. Yeah. Get those people up there. You know, well, get what, they don't, what they don't Thank realize you. crap is, you know, you, you think of it from the ESPN standpoint. People put sports, you know, sports car racing, NASCAR into sports, but in gaming, it's a completely different category entirely. I mean, people yeah. take racing games so seriously on both platforms. 
And uh, you can look at how many games. I mean, myself personally, I'm not into them. I'm really not. Uh, I, I respect them. I respect them. I think a lot of hard work goes into all those games. I think this year, like many years, uh, every other year we get saturated. Need for Speed, GT Sport, Forza, Forza Horizon. Uh, you know, then there, there's a million of F1, whatever the other one is. I mean, it goes on and on. You can't cram. And they cram all of them within three months. Like, why can't two of these racing games come out in the spring, two in the summer, and two in the fall? No, all six come out in October. I don't know. I, I just, I, to me, I don't get it. But to get back to the point of the matter is that I think that's why they group them together, but that's why they're wrong, though. The, the sports category is the Madden, yes. the NHLs, right? You know what I mean? All that kind of stuff that they have, the FIFAs. And then you have racing. Racing really in gaming is its own category. I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, when Rocket League got put in for what was the best racing game or something, I was like, what the? It's not a, yeah, that's not a racing it's game. It's not a race. Yeah. You got cars in it. I get it, but it's not a racing game. You know? <laughs> You're playing yeah, racing soccer to the ball. Cars. That's about it. I mean, but, I guess yeah. you technically no. could put soccer cars maybe against like a Madden NHL and FIFA, I guess. I yeah. don't I don't know. Well, there's, <laughs> um, that's the thing. There's enough racing games. Like this year alone, like, think about how many racing games come out. Most of them were like decent, right? Decent to not really good. You know, you could even include Need for Speed. It still is a racing game, even though it's a more story-focused racing game. But there was enough racing games this year between Forza, uh, Gran Turismo Sport. Uh, you got the, what was it, like Dirt 4, wasn't it, that came out this year? Then you got Need for Speed. And you've oh got, uh, you know, the list, F1. The how, list many go on a, how many times can you go in a circle? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> But I mean, you know, the, there's enough racing games to have its own category. So why are you clumping them in? It just, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, especially yeah. like, is it going to kill them to have an extra freaking, uh, an extra award? You know, best racing game or best sports game? Right, right. Be separate things, really. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It makes like, them look like they don't matter, right? Like that's yeah. the that's the bottom line, and that's that's a disservice. That's not what the game awards should be about in, in regards to this. And I think you know as as people to watch the wars, I think we want to fight, right? Like a, a good fight. Like if you go watch a boxing match, you want to see two heavyweights that are pretty evenly matched, right? You want to right. see how that's going to turn out, right? You, you don't want to see, have such a weird lopsided thing where you kind of like, oh, you already know that person's going to win, right? You, you, no one wants to see that. People want to see that 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 fight, and then when you have that fight, that person that wins, that's the person to beat, right? That's right. the new pedestal in that particular category. Um, and I just don't think it fairly represents well, the I don't, hard work that goes. Yeah, on. I'm, I'm I'm glad Noof just banned that guy. Like that guy's just taking anything we uh, say and just, just making yeah, a sentence and flip. Well, what we were saying was, I'll say I'll say it even though he's gone. Like we were saying, yet yeah, we understand that racing is its own category. We're trying to say it should be its own category. It's not currently its own category is the yeah, problem. But thank you, Noof. It's, it's like racing slash sports games, yeah. which it should have its own. Holy yeah. crap! Uh, that's all we were trying to say. Like Pete, wow. man. Like I don't understand. Oof. Like, well, how are these wow, people? I don't know. We got the top. The PUBG thing must have brought in the toxicity tonight because it yeah. did because yeah. they're yeah. super yeah. jealous. Well, tonight. they beat NAC two four times already, so they're bored. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the problem is, is jealousy is a hell of a drug. Sure is. So people <laughs> like the, the biggest game of the year, and, and it's not on their console, and it's not yeah. on PlayStation Four. That's, that's basically yeah. that's that's all. Yeah, that would, that's ain't that special. Shame. Ain't that special? Yeah, sorry, guys. Yeah, keep sorry. it up I mean, there, at level one hundred. You'll get your fucking axe banned out of here too. <laughs> <laughs> fifteen frames. I'll give you fucking fifteen frames in a prison cell with some hey, big ass motherfuckers. Listen, listen. The funny thing is, it's zero frames on PS4. So I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, that's basically what you're dealing with. Uh, so listen, The Last of Us Two. They said is only about fifty percent complete. Uh, supposedly, this is the game they've been working on for years. Uh, if it's only 50% complete now, Jesus, like when will this game come out? Like I could really see a 2020 release date for this thing. Which one? Spring. The Last of Us 2. Oh, yeah. The Last of Us 2 is going to come out. Listen, everyone's wondering when is the PS5 coming? Let's stop guessing, folks. Stop guessing. The minute we find out when The Last of Us 2 is coming out, that's the last year of the PS4. That's what it is. <laughs> They're going to release it. On the last year, just like they hey, did with somebody, the first one on the PS3. Somebody said that to me, too. They go, because that way they can remaster it when the PS5 comes right. out. <laughs> yeah, the PS5 comes out, they get another eight remasters of it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a bit... Uh, I, like, I don't really care about The Last of Us anyway. Like, that's not my thing. I do, but I got um, news for you. from Just from what I'm seeing uh, in the CGIs, which, as Don said, strike one, strike two already, two CGIs, um, I'm, not, I'm not overly impressed. 
if you're going to go ahead and take one of the most like coveted games that is coming out, and I understand you don't like it crap, but a lot of people are looking forward to it, me being one of them. Yeah, and you I would showed, never shit on it. Like, that's no, but, fine. That second, but that second yeah. CGI was awful. It was terrible. That's not what yeah. I wanted to see as, as a fan of The Last of Us. Um, that just shows me that I'm not sure if I like where they're going with it. Like, what? Like, show me some yeah. gameplay of this game. I, why are you showing me that that ridiculousness? That when I understand that there's all these factions and things happening, like in The Walking Dead, you know, there's your Negans out there and there's your Ricks and there's this and that going on. But I mean, there's no I don't more know. Carl, right? There's no more Carl. Uh, Carl. <laughs> Carl. Carl. Yeah. Carl. <laughs> Spoiler Carl. alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Carl's hurt. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. For some reason, I just I I I, I really like what Don said earlier. It, it, it's a piss poor showing from Sony to have two CGIs of their their biggest games coming out and that people are most hyped yeah, if, about. If you got four to five hours of Death Stranding and you're still not showing even two minutes of gameplay, hmm, you know. Yeah. And if you've got fifty percent done on Last of Us Two and you're not showing any gameplay, hmm. Yeah, you know, and that's like, fine. And Danny, you don't want to show it at E3. You want to show any, uh, another CGI, but then why on PSX didn't they show a little gameplay or, or give us a release? I have no or... idea. The stuff that they showed at PSX was very disheartening. Uh, like that Detroit game looks like a real piece of crap. Well, any any game that's a, you know, like uh, telltale or just move around, search a room and press a button with a lot of story, that's not a me game. I, I can't. I just can't. I play a lot of games at like 10, 10, 30 at night to start. Going into 12 30, 1 in the morning, there's no way I can sit there and listen to a Humpty Dumpty story for three hours. I just can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah. Won't do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, like, I mean, the game looks cool off, like Detroit Become Human or whatever it's called. I mean, I like the content of it, you know, and the graphic style is always interesting. But I don't know. Like, I played the other games by Quantic Dream. Uh, I can't even, it was a heavy rain. And what was the one they had after that? Like I played those games and I just never could get into them. They're like more advanced versions of the telltale games. You know what I mean? Like there's a little more action, but at the end of the day, it's still like walk over here, listen to this person, press X, Y, or O, or you know what I mean? It's just, it's not groundbreaking, right? But it's more yeah. adult, adult theme. Yeah. Like it's it's like an interactive movie. And some people really like that. And that's cool. But for me, it's not my cup of tea, but I hope the game does all right. I mean, I, I want all these games to do well. I mean, they'll find an audience one way or another. Honestly, I, I, I root for categories that even I don't like. And so that is a genre that should push those kind of boundaries as far as like what type of stories you can tell. Uh, in, in that particular environment because you know that's the type of game my wife would play right she doesn't mm -hmm. play a lot of games and so it gets them involved in the media so it does serve a good purpose but it's not it's not a uh, title you use to boast what you already spent money on right yeah or it's a piece of hardware like it, it's put in perspective it's a game for a certain particular group of people and you know it's that's that's what it is you know it's nothing more nothing less right yeah you know what you're here's the thing though don right like that type of game which doesn't have like you're not able to control the camera or anything like that it's basically a telltale game that's like very pretty mm -hmm. you know they because they do the graph and people try to point that out as a graphical showpiece or whatever like i'm always like bullshit you know it's like you can't do anything in the game of course it's pretty you know i used to say the same thing about god of war you can't move the camera so you're basically forced on what they want to show you at all times of course it's going to look good well, if, if you choose those game design elements, right, you you kind of have an obligation to make the game as good looking as possible, right? Yeah. Because, you know, you have certain confines that you have this overhead that you can actually utilize, right? So, you know, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. If, if you do that as a game choice of this is what your game is and, you know, you set these certain limitations, then, yeah, if you have that overhead power, use it to, to the max of his ability. We talked about this, like, with the X all the time, right? We want people to utilize what the X has, right? And in the case that, you know, it's no different on this. If you limit what the, the game can do, then utilize what you can do with the hardware there. Don't just waste it, right? Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I, and, uh, you know, that's not going to be a game that I'll ever play. You know, like I played um, Beyond Two Souls and that was just horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just it was just really it's, bad. It's it's not for everybody, right? Like, yeah. You know, that's the thing is, I like those Telltale them. games, though. Most of them, I don't like all of them, mind you. But I, I don't, I don't like those either, right? Like, yeah. so uh, you know, when certain games are kind of a niche, you know, you don't do yourself any favor. Put them out of uh, perspective, right, and talk them up more than they should. 
you should just share what your experience is and what type of game it is, right? And yeah. Then see what people gravitate towards it. That that will do more favors for that game than anything else. Because what happens when someone you convince someone else to buy a game they're really not interested in because you oversold it, and then they end up liking it and they end up talking trash about it. That doesn't do your particular console any favors when you do that, right? So just share what your yeah. experience is and what you like about the game. And leave it at that. Like it shouldn't have to be trash talking either way. I, I know this sounds a little bit more like a Unity candle, but it, that's that's the harsh reality. Well, I, I, can I? And I, Don, I'm sorry to interrupt you, man. But this Milky Way guy, he's he, like, I want to, I want to actually communicate with him, but he's not making any sense. He's still <laughs> on this PUBG stuff. He's going on and on, and he's like harassing people in the chat. Milky Way, I'll say it again to you. You go. I find it dumb how people are defending the game. No one's defending shit. It's in preview. You can't walk out of your table at a restaurant into the kitchen, grab your dinner halfway cooked, take a little bite of it, turn to the chef and slap him and be like, this is some shit. It's not finished. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. We're not defending it, but the game's not done. I don't know. Why, why do you keep saying the same thing over and over again? And I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. And I'm like, I, I think you're an educated guy. You're actually typing correctly. Some don't. You do. Uh, why are you saying the same thing over and over again? Now, in six months, seven months, if you're in this chat and you say to me, hey, by the way, you know what? This thing's not done. Now I'm with you. Now I'm like, all right, they had six, seven months. This is still the same thing as day one. Now we got something. Now we got something. But well, you can't keep saying that when the game is in preview. Well, to put that in pers perspective, right? I did not buy the game because I knew it was in preview, right? I, everyone's enjoying this game for what it is. I want to finish polished game. I'm going to wait until it's done. I have yeah. no That's fine. Doing it. And I exactly. have no doing it. You know, I just represent another side of it, right? That's right. So, so like, you know, and, and, it, and I, don't, I don't knock it for having 20 frames because I know what it is, right? It, it is an unfinished game. You're going to get performance dips. It's going to get good and it's going to get bad. It's simple as that. I, I think that's very clear. Uh, I think there's been a history of games that in preview other preview programs outside of Xbox that have shown that. So, right. you know, if he, if he wants to keep taking it out of context, <laughs> let him take it out of context. That's like that's his that's his problem at that. Right. Point, yeah. At this right? point, you know? exactly. And you, Don, you make a great point. I want everyone to know if you take the stance of Don and you say I'm not buying this game until it's done, you're not going to get an argument from me. You're not. That's fine. Yeah. That's your prerogative. That's your money. Now, I do believe there's rumor. Guys, please tell me if I'm wrong. But if you wait till it's done, it may cost you 60 bucks or 40 bucks. See, Maybe. That's, I don't, don't, that's what we don't know because preview used to be. We don't know yet, right? You, used yeah. to be cheaper. There's rumors. Yeah, preview program always used to be cheaper, right? And we don't really know what's going on with this. So we don't know if you're getting a deal or the deal is you get early access. Yeah. Right. And so, either way, I'm content. I'm not going to yeah. get angry either way. All I'm saying to you is because there is a value to playing something ahead of time. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, I, I, I think there's a value. I could jump in and play and have a little bit of fun in advance with all my friends who were playing. I've been watching people stream this game on Mixer and Twitch and other places for months and months and months. And I'm like, it does look interesting. I want to give it a try. So did I know there was going to be flaws in it? Absolutely. I didn't pick it up going, yeah, this game is going to be flawless or it's going to run at this or it's going to run at that. I had no freaking idea. None of us did what it was going to be like, you know, like, so yeah, am I a little disappointed? I think, I think there's, it's got more broken parts in it than I expected. I suppose when I, when I launched it, but at the same time, there was nothing that was really groundbreaking me. And like I said, me and Mooch played a few games and like I said, outside of the startups and a couple of things here, here and there like it was totally playable we were having a good time and at the end of the day that's all it is you have a good time you play with your friends you send the feedback blue hole listens they will tweak it they will patch it and eventually hopefully we get the product that we all hope and deserve to get basically so, it's jealousy dude these days yeah. they claim to have these pcs to play these games don't have them and they're pissed off because xbox has the biggest game of the year and so they're trying to find every little thing to yeah. complain about that's all it is that's all it is. It is. That nothing is legit. Because well, if the frame, I mean, if the frames were locked at thirty, they'd be like, "Oh my god, look at the grass gate in this game." Yeah, it's horrible. You know, look it'd at be grass textures. gate they, or yeah, be textures. Are bad and, and 30 is bad on Xbox, right. but on PS4, it's just fucking right. fine and dandy. Get out of here. Right, let's, whatever. let's put it in this perspective, right? Like, as somebody that didn't buy the game, right? But I look at my friends list just like anybody else. When you turn on your Xbox and you see who you're gonna hop in a party with and what are you gonna be playing or what's going on, and PUBG is all over my friends list, but I go into 
every one of my friends, they're at least in a party of like six to 10 people all playing the same game together. Like I have never seen a game do that. Right. I've seen games kind of take over the week. Right. But I've never seen a game force everybody into a party with a bunch of people. I don't even know yet. Right. All playing the same game together. That is something very, very special. And that doesn't come along very often. So, you know, you can criticize their frame rate or all these other things, but the reality is. <laughs> the, reality, the reality is that 500,000 sold in 24 hours, Don, is a su- success. Yeah, yeah, like it really is. You know, <laughs> it is. And that's it's sold more than it. Gravity Rush uh, 2. It's sold yeah. more than Yakuza 0. It's sold more than Hellblade. Hellblade combined. combined. Yeah, Hellblade in three oh. months with PC and PS4 was 500,000. PUBG did that alone on Xbox in 24 hours. Yep. So, I mean, it, it is kind of is what it is, and it just makes you guys look kind of bad um, for really complaining about a game that you don't have. You know, how, how do you think it would run on the PS4? That's the funny thing, right? So careful what you wish for. Right. <laughs> because at the end of the day, uh, let's say the game comes there a year later, um, I would laugh because you know I'd be doing a video about that because it would run like shit on PS4. Because it runs on shit on a PC and it runs like shit. Well, on Xbox, you know what I mean? Like, what do you expect? It's constantly getting updated. They're constantly tweaking it. Um, Who knows if it'll ever be a game that really runs well. Like, if you go back and play Ark Survival Evolved, right? That game, even on the X, even though it got an update and stuff, um, it still kind of runs like crap a little bit. So. You know, uh, well, it's sometimes just really cool. if the engine is broke to begin with, it doesn't matter how many patches, it just never really runs right. Like it's it's like building a house. If you don't put in, you know, the proper foundation, if you don't do a house the right way, what happens in the long haul is you get many, many problems that extend it from not building it right in the first place. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. Uh, it, it's, it's odd to see people really this salty. And the fact that so many of them came out tonight in the wow. chat and stuff, yeah. You can really tell when Xbox is on to something. Yeah, Xbox did something right. <laughs> Xbox must have did something yeah. right to get all that salty hate. I'm telling you. So, so, so how many uh, multiplayer games come out that change the genre of multiplayer? It doesn't happen very often, no. right? It happens with like Gears did it with Horde, right? And there's people would copycat and clone that, right? You know, there there was battle modes, and this is that next step, right? This is you know we've seen people try to put a bunch of players on a server, but it was like basically. A shit show right it just the game just kind of fell apart and broke this is the first time i've just seen this many players and you still have a game right yeah it's not even having a game running but you actually have a game that people are enjoying and having a good time with right at, at the end of the day you can be upset all you want but you know it, it's, it's not your problem it's not a, your problem that's the thing it's not your problem and you're making <laughs> it your problem it doesn't need to be that way like it's, they're making it their problem because it's a chance to make try and make xbox look bad uh, but it, it really it doesn't because I there's so many people I know are playing it. Everybody's like, man, I just got done playing it. Literally, this thing is a is a happening, and people well, are are playing it on Xbox. Like, here's amazing. the harsh reality: the PUBG numbers outweigh the people that are trying to criticize it. That's the yeah. harsh harsh reality. So, if you want to take that stance and you want to be hard on people that are playing PUBG on the Xbox, the hard reality: there's more of them out there that are enjoying the game than the people that are criticizing. Yeah. That, that voice is going to be heard more than the people that are trying to criticize it. So, yeah. you know, that, that threshold has happened for Xbox, right? We always wonder, like, when is that point going to hit where people are gonna, not going to be, like, they don't have that weight like they once did? That has happened this year. So, like it or not, you can keep trying to trash on the platform, but it's going to do what it's going to do yeah. regardless of what you say or don't say. So, yeah. it's, it's up to you guys is what yeah. you want to do there. It, it, you're exactly right, and the fact that it, this thing's going to be continue to be successful and probably see over a million by the end of the weekend, um, that says it all. I mean, this is a hugely successful game. It could even do much better than that. Who the hell knows? You know, yeah. but it's very exciting. Well, uh, yeah, because you're seeing it. Crap, crap, you make a good yeah. point. The numbers are, you know, the sales are going to be interesting here because it, it's it's happened. There was three or four people on Twitter. Uh, I won't mention their names, but they were all like, eh, I'm going to pass on PUBG. And then today they were like, all right, I'm eating my own words. I'm getting all their, it because all everybody their friends has it. That's what they said. They said last night I turned it on and every like every one of my friends was playing PUBG last night. Like everybody. No. I would say at least like 80% were playing PUBG. And a lot of people that were like, nah, they weren't anti-PUBG. They were just going to wait. 
Yeah. They're like, all right, I'm going to eat my words. I'm buying PUBG. Because, A, it's $29. Like, yeah. the argument is like, is there's no argument. There's absolutely no argument. I told you. If you just go to Five Guys with your friend, you're at you're yeah. over $26. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. There's that. So the, the price is right. It's the most popular yeah. game. It, it, it's changing gaming in a sense because we don't have a game like this except for Fortnite. But uh, for all of you that are just yeah. really tired of cartoony shit, it's a nice change. Um, and, and like I say, you have an entire community playing it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's definitely worth your $29. I don't give a shit what anybody says. You know what's yeah. yeah. And, and coming into a chat and trashing the game simply because deep down inside, we know some of the reasons people are trashing it because it's not on your console choice. Well, here's here's two things. It might come to the PS4. You know what? And I'm, I'm glad if it does. If it comes to the PS4 a year later, great. You know what? I got a PS4. I can run. buy the PS4 copy too. But the thing is, okay, if it doesn't come out, well, you got a choice. You can go out and buy an Xbox and play the game now and play it with other friends, whatever, and enjoy it now. Great. And that's fantastic. You know what? I didn't sit back years ago and not buy a PlayStation uh, and, and bitch about it, like say, like, hey, I don't have a PlayStation, so you know what? Uncharted is a piece of trash. It's a terrible game. I don't like uh, Ratchet and Clank because I don't have a PS4. It's a piece of trash. I don't do that, and people in this podcast aren't doing it. You know what? When I want a game that's on the PS4, guys, you know what to do? I pony up a little bit of bitch money and go out and buy the damn console and play the freaking <laughs> game. Like, it's that simple. You've just like, crushed uh, a lot of people right there. Man, You're like, right now. Uh, Fucking common sense, but no, it some is. of you guys are just too stubborn. All you guys want to do is bitch on the other console because you're jealous we don't have this game or that game and blah, blah, blah. Like, just get over yourselves, man. Seriously. You know what's uh, going to be the biggest week for PUBG, I, I really think, uh, this year? It's not the launch week. It's actually the day right after Christmas because it's the right price point where people have just extra little bit of cash they get from gift certificates and things like that. Yeah. Along those lines, like... Expect those numbers to shoot up again right in that window right after Christmas. And it's a good point, Dar. And yeah, you're going to see good those point. numbers like, skyrocket once again. Like, this thing can't be stopped. Like, you know, you, you got to get on the ride or, or get off, right? Like, the, you, you can't stop it. You, get off the tracks, man. Get, get off the tracks. Can't Woo! Get it, that's for sure. You're just exactly. Gonna I mean, just it is what it is. So, and, and with that, believe it or not, we hit two hours. Uh, Mooch <laughs> sent me the gif like a couple seconds ago. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, I'm surprised actually. Uh, the show went really well for four people. I thought it went, went damn well. So, um, you know, I appreciate everybody coming out here and supporting us tonight. We put on a damn good show. Please hit that like button and check out all these guys' channels. They all have channels and stuff like that. Uh, Mooch, what do you got going on, man? Oh, well, we got Crossfire Friday night. Uh, 7 o'clock Eastern, and then we've got uh, MNC Mornings on my channel, yeah. uh, 11 a.m. Sunday morning. So my channel. Back but, weekend. Yeah. Is wait, it no, yours? It is no, your mine. No, it's yours. Wait. Stop hogging no, the channel. Mine. No, it's mine. <laughs> no, it's mine this week, dude. We just did yours, remember? Oh, you're right. Damn it. Yes, I'm, hog I'm hogging the channel. Weekend. Damn it. Yeah, he's, he's trying to hog it, so hopefully hogging. we can do that. Plus, it looks like we might be giving away an MNC Mornings controller. Ooh, yes, that, that controller nice. is gorgeous, by the way. Yeah. You guys, you guys will like yeah. that. Uh, Noof Nukem, what do you got going on, bro? <laughs> what do I have going on? Well, you know what? I'm going to go back and play me some of that 15 frames a second PUBG. And like everybody else, <laughs> like a million people. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, man. Like Outside of playing games, you know what? You guys will find me here week in, week out with these awesome characters on this awesome show, Xbox Nation. You guys can find me on Xbox at Noof Nukem and Noof underscore Nukem on the PlayStation Network as well. And uh, yeah, also on Monday nights with Attack to Glitcher and the X-Power podcast. So outside of that, uh, that's about it really uh cletus is still doing his thing and he's overdue for another video and i might have to do an arnold video too there's been some people requesting some arnie so maybe, oh, yeah, maybe i'll have know, to do a video yeah. after the predator uh yeah, i was gonna say draws for record for, some of that yeah. that would be great that would actually be would awesome that? yeah i'll have to narrate the whole thing you guys should be in that stream with me when we do that it'd be hilarious that, that would be awesome uh and the don thank you for joining us tonight uh what do you got going on uh, not much. I started actually doing some more stuff on Happy Little Polygons. I did a live stream today. It was a creative live stream of me working on a, a character within my game. So you guys can start seeing some stuff behind the scene. Like I like to say, it's it's how the sausage is made, uh, as far as all that's concerned. So you can, you know, best way to do is just follow me on Twitter, which is the Don underscore KTR. Um, the and, I'll, I'll and then all the haters are in this chat like if you show up to my live stream with with all that hate nonsense i'm just gonna ban you i, I have zero tolerance for that that's not <laughs> what that stuff is for it's for people that are curious at how games are made 
Um, I'm, I'm a 3D modeler, so you know, for those people, that's what it's there for. Um, if you're if you're just gonna go there and hate, I'm just gonna ban you right away. You get you get zero chances. You probably won't get any stuff like that, man. These kids are pissed off because they can't play PUBG on PS4. That's all it is. Um, you know, with your stuff. Good luck with that stuff. And we'll appreciate everybody for watching tonight. We'll be back next week. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Uh, thanks for rocking out with us. We'll catch you later. Have a great night. We'll see ya.